All right. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the free EKG class. And uh, this is an exclusive show for everyone who registered. Okay. So this is not live streaming my page right now. This is the first time I'm doing it. I'm trying it. Last time when I did a free class, I live streamed it in my Facebook and I live streamed it in my um, it through Zoom. But right now, I wanted to make an exclusive access for my followers. All right. So thank you for joining. There are now 86 uh, people joining us today. To tell you guys, honestly, there are 500 people who registered for this class. And welcome, everybody. Apologies that <clears throat> we had to start late. Um, uh, <clears throat> to, to, to give you guys an overview, all right, before, before I fully introduce myself, we are going to live stream this two ways, all right? One is here for public viewing. It's not actually publicly live streamed, but for those who registered through the webinar, you're going to watch me through this screen that you're watching right now. For my Aspire RN students, are there anyone here in the public live stream that are my Aspire RN students? If you are an Aspire RN enrolled student, go to your portal at AspireRN.com and go to your live class link, all right? So we're streaming this two ways. One is a classroom via Zoom with my enrolled students, all right? And I have three screens in, my, in front of me right now. And one is through... Uh, this screen right here for public viewing for those that are not yet my student. All right. Is that clear for everybody? So we're streaming it live, live, right? Two ways. I'm going to look this way. I'm going to look that way. I'm going to look that way. We have three cameras going on in here. Okay. All right. For my students, thank you for joining. Tell your friends, tell your classmates in class that we are live streaming through the e-portal. And for everyone else, tell your friends that we've already started. Okay, we have, um, hopefully there'd be, there'd be no mishap. I think my Wi-Fi signal is starting to act up today. It's a little gloomy and rainy here in Houston. So hopefully we can get that up and running. Um, to, to, to give you guys an overview, this webinar for public viewing to those who registered, there are 500 registrants and more people are joining. Okay. And, uh, Tell them uh, that we have a maximum of 250 seats only, 250, all right? So that's why if you're my student from Aspire RN, go to the live portal, to the classroom portal, so we can open up the spots for those who want to watch it for free. So we still have about uh, 150 more spots open, all right? Uh, I know some people are coming in late. This is going to be three to four hours of the class, all right? But anyway, for those who are joining, thank you. Can you guys introduce yourselves quickly where you guys are coming from? All right. Um, Cheryl said, thank you for this class, uh, for this opportunity. EKG is one of my Achilles heel. Um, Tomoko Fukunishi is joining from Japan, I think. Yes. And uh, Mark Dizen is joining from Tennessee here in USA. John is from Saudi Arabia. Ninochka Bridges is from Houston. Hello, neighbor. All right, Tyrone is from Palawan, Philippines. Include the country, guys, for my Filipino people that are joining. Hello from Leyte, Philippines. Um, Ellen from Germany. Welcome to my German uh, followers. All right. And uh, to introduce myself very quickly for my public followers, um, I'm Dr. Nurse Paul in social media. My full name is Paul Billuan, and this is also for my students. All right. And uh, I'm a nurse educator, NCLEX educator for more than 16 years, turning 17 years this year. I also own the company above here. It's called Aspire RN. Our review program is called the Dr. Nurse Paul Method. I developed that program evidence-based from my 17 years of um, practice as an NCLEX educator. Currently, I'm located here in Houston, Texas. All right. I practice here as an urgent care nurse practitioner. I used to be an ER nurse. I left the ER last year. My last ER job was more than a year ago, just over a year. And I have two microphones because we're streaming it two, two ways. Right. Um, and uh, now I'm working three days a week as an urgent care nurse practitioner. The rest of the days, either I'm teaching an Aspire RN or you see me in social media doing live shows. 
But basically, more than NCLEX, I also advocate for immigrant nurses uh, who are outside the U.S. wanting to come over to the U.S. to prevent you guys from getting abused, for prevention of, you know, human trafficking or unscrupulous agencies that would offer you, um, like, bad contracts that will subject you to human trafficking. But other than that, I love teaching, as you guys already know. That is my passion. That's why I built my program, Aspire RN. And that's why every now and then I do free live classes like this for everybody because I just love teaching. All right. So we now have about 100 viewers here in our public stream. And to my students, my students are coming from Houston as well. Dina, you have to message me so we can meet up. All right. I want to feature you in my social media. Jacqueline is from California. Amina is from Ghana. These are my students. How about the others? All right. Um, we have our Nepal students here. Sheila is here from Nepal. So my students in Aspire are in from 40 plus different countries. In the public show, we have Diana from United Arab Emirates, Dubai. Um, and uh, Cheryl is going to be working in North Dakota. Siri is here. She's from Thailand. Edissa is from Colorado. Welcome. Yumi is from Washington State. I love Washington State. Chris, Chrysal is from Canada. Mylene is from the Philippines. John is from Philippines. Jocelyn is in Florida. Mark is watching from Singapore. Jam is from New York. We are all over the world. Meritus is in Philippines. Michelle is in Dallas. Welcome, welcome. Rose is in Ohio. Uh, Moy Pony is from Lee Soto. Cartini is from Chicago, Illinois. Lots of people from USA. Um, um, JP, Julius Paul is from Connecticut. Antoinette is from New York. Lots of people here. Clea is from Albania. All right. Wow, we're representing most of the world already. So we have North America, US and Canada. We have Europe. We have Africa here, right? We have Asia. Where are my Australian and South Americans? All right, we usually represent all six continents. Okay, but um, if you are an Australia, New Zealander, or from the South American continent, you identify yourself. That way we can see if we have covered all six continents. But we are all over the world today, guys. Thank you for joining. And we are about to start our EKG class, our favorite. Are you guys ready? All right, for my students. And for everyone here in the public live stream, all right, I like to start with positivity. I'm a huge believer of law of attraction, me meaning whatever energy you send out to the universe, that's the same energy that goes back to you. So if you're always negative, right, negative thinker, you speak negative things, you think negatively about yourself, negative things happen to you, correct? If you're a positive thinker, everything just you know, becomes easier. Even if you're going through challenges, obstacles, you always look for the positive side of things is what I say, all right? And as you guys prepare for the NCLEX, who among you from the live stream? I know my students are all preparing for NCLEX, but who among you are preparing for NCLEX? Maybe some of you guys are already nurses and just wants to brush up with the, with the EKG basics, all right? But if you're taking the NCLEX soon, I want you guys to tell yourself, yes, I can. Three power powerful words that I want to always share to my students. That's I, what I always tell myself in the morning, whatever challenges I'm going through. Yes, I can. Can we declare it and manifest it? Whatever you're going through right now, if you're already a nurse, but you're struggling with your work or EKG, you tell yourself, yes, I can. Can we do that? Put it in the chat box. Everyone who will succeed past the NCLEX, succeed as a nurse, say, yes, I can. All right. We have Kaushik joining us from Chicago. Thank you. RuPaul is joining us from Chicago. Thank you. These are my um, followers from um, social media. Thank you so much for following me, guys. And more content. I've been extremely busy recently. That's why you see social media is not really updated. But I have so much content to share. And even then, you can always join me, Dr. Nurse Paul, do DNP Unlocked. All right, tomorrow we have another show. We're going to talk about documentation. Join everyone. We're going to have Advocates for Nurses. She's popular in TikTok. She, is, she used to be a nurse expert, expert witness. She's going to talk to us how to chart correctly, especially here in the U.S. 
so you're not going to be dragged into a lawsuit, all right? So you're not going to be sued. That's it. So how to chart legally, not only correctly, but also legally. So join us tomorrow. We do DNP Unlocked every Sunday, 8 a.m. Central Time, Central U.S. Time. That's DNP Unlocked. That's one of the things I do all the time. But you can also follow me in Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. I always post stuff about NCLEX about nursing in the U.S. in general, about current trends and issues, about pharmacology tips, about NCLEX tips, about so many things. If you want me to talk about stuff, you tell me, and I'm going to make a content for that, but I'm a content creator as well, all right? And before we start, Aspire RN is running for retakers, all right? Running a 50% off on our program, all right? full course down from 550 to 275 dollars and that's one year unlimited it's actually unlimited until you pass all right until you pass hopefully you only take your mflex once but our program is until you pass all right 275 dollars with 42 live sessions repeating every two months and uh 5, questions in the question bank personal student advisor personal mentorship doctor nurse full guarantees 50% off right now, only until the end of February. This is for retakers, all right? For first takers, we are 30% off today. But if you stay until the end of the show, I have a little surprise for you guys as well, all right? Everybody who's ready, let's say yes, I can. And we are about to start. Let me have a sip of coffee. All right. So if there's a malfunction in any of my screens today, don't leave. I'm going to fix it quickly, okay? But I have multiple screens in front of me. This is the first time I'm doing this. It's a little crazy. But before I put everybody in Zoom and our Zoom got hacked, so I don't want to risk that again. If you guys are interested in one of our programs in Aspire RN, it's AspireRN.com. You can also message my team. In the public live stream, you have the QR code right there. It's our Facebook Messenger link. Just message us here, scan that right now, scan that right now, and send my team a message. Maybe we can help you with something, all right? Okay, let's now do your EKG class, all right? Who loves EKG? Everybody. Anyone here working as a CCU nurse, CVICU nurse, telemetry nurse, cath lab nurse, ER, ICU? Anyone who needs to be proficient with EKG? So I'm going to go through the basics, the most common, the EKGs that are in ACLS management, because those are the most common anyway, all right? I'm not going to go deep into like discussion of all the EKGs that a cardiologist would learn. We're going to see, we're going to talk about what we commonly see in the hospital setup. Very important for NCLEX takers, but also very important for nurses that are already working here in the USA. Arnold is an ER nurse, just like me. How about the others? Anyone here? Am I clear in the public stream? You guys can hear me clearly, right? Yes? Okay. And don't lose your spot, guys. There's only 250 spots right here. All right? All right. Okay. Very good. Rubaiyat is also an ER nurse. Hello, Rubaiyat. I haven't seen you for a while. I love my students, guys. They keep repeating the classes, which for me, that's what I prefer, right? Repetition promotes learning. So if your weakness is, say, for example, pharmacology, then keep attending pharmacology classes. That's how you become proficient to it. You're not going to memorize everything overnight, right? Same thing with EKG. You need practice for it. Whatever I taught to you guys today, if you don't apply it to your practice or you don't see EKG on a daily, it will be hard to memorize that or it'd be hard to apply that, right? So let's now go to your EKG basics. All right. So let's discuss your EKG first. Let's see if my screen will now permit me to move it. All right. Let's go to your EKG. Before we talk about EKG, all right, we're going to talk about the cardiac conduction system. There might be a little delay with the way I write or might be a little off because I could not synchronize my screen earlier. The reason probably is um, in Zoom, it's easy for me to do it. In, in StreamYard, this is the platform we're using for public show. Um, it's it's hard so to, to, to synchronize my pen to the screen. So it might be off sometimes, all right? But you let me know and I'll fix it, okay? But let's start about, uh, let's start to talk about conduction system. When we talk about EKG, 
we talk about electrical firing to the heart. Agree? We're not talking about the heart muscle. We're not talking about the valves. We're not talking about the blood flow. Right? Disorders to those things are different um, different topics. It could be CHF, MI, but those are different discussions, right? Today, we're only going to focus on the electrical firing of the heart. Agree? Yes or no? And of course, we have the electrical conduction system or the nerves of the heart to make sure that the heart pumps, right? We have three nodes or three areas that we need to talk about, and we're going to start with what we call the SA node. Everyone familiar with SA node? Yes or no? Yes? Okay, let's talk about the SA node. Oops. Okay. Okay, so I think um, it's lagging a bit. All right, but bear with me on this, all right? So let's talk about the SA node, guys. SA node is otherwise known as the primary pacemaker, right? Primary pacemaker, primary pacemaker. When we say pacemaker, with the word itself, it makes the pace, right? It creates or generates the electrical conduction, all right? It creates or generates the electrical conduction for the heart. It mainly controls the rhythm of the heart conduction. We're talking about electrical firing, okay? So that's why it's called primary, all right? SA node should always, all the time, control the rate and rhythm of the heart. Whenever SA node misfires, which means it's not firing correctly, or the SA node loses the ability to control and other nodes or other part of the heart is now controlling the rhythm and rate, that is what we call dysrhythmia. Dysrhythmia means abnormal rhythm, okay? Again, let's review. This is very basic. What is the primary pacemaker of the heart? Go. Go, go, go. Come on, come on. Everybody will pass the anthrax. What is the primary pacemaker of the heart? Again, it's... What, what happened to my live stream? Uh, am I still here? Nobody's answering me. There you go. The SA node. It took a while for one person to answer. Guys, this is going to be interactive, okay? I'm going to be very good to my students. This will be interactive. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions. So you're going to have to start typing, okay? SA node. And SA node, all right, as a primary pacemaker, can deliver at least 60 to 100 per minute. We're talking about adult heart rate here, right? Is that your normal heart rate as well? Yes or no? Is that your normal heart rate as well? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. That is our normal heart rate as well, right? And that is because SA node can deliver that amount, 60 to 100. Over 100 is called tachycardia, fast heart rate, right? Below 60 is called bradycardia, all right? Again, how many pacings or rate can the SA node deliver in a minute? In a minute, go. 60 to 100, agree? Yes or no? Yes. So that's the SA node right here, guys. SA node is right there, all right? All right? So that's right there, all right? That is your SA node. Somewhere between IVC, or IVC is going upward, and SVC junction towards your right atria, all right? Now, once the SA node fires, all right, it goes to the internodal pathways right there, right? And it goes to a secondary node. The secondary node is what we call, what do we call that, guys? A, V, node, all right? A, V, node is a secondary pacemaker, all right? Pacemaker, all right? A little issue with my writing here. Secondary pacemaker, all right? Secondary pacemaker, which means if the S, A, node fails, can the A, V, node take over, yes or no? If the S, A, node fails, can the um, A, V, node take over, yes or no? Yes, that's why it's called secondary pacemaker. However, your AV node can only deliver 40 to 60 per minute. 40 to 60 per minute. Again, what is your secondary pacemaker? Go. Secondary pacemaker. Come on. Come on. Secondary pacemaker. Everybody? Everybody? AV node. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. I, I look this way. These are my students in the Zoom meeting. And I look this way. This is a public meeting, all right? Just so you know who I'm pointing at, all right? This way, 
students in the portal. This way, you guys in the public stream. Very good. How many can the AV node deliver in a minute? How many can the AV node deliver in a minute? We're going to take a little slow pacing today so we can understand it better, okay? How many? Very good. 40 to 60. 40 to 60. So if the SA node fails, the AV node delivers, right? This is my question. If the SA node fails and the AV node becomes the primary pacemaker to control your heart rate, all right, I have neck spasm today, so forgive me if I do this. Is it delivering enough heart rate to make a good cardiac output? Is the AV node delivering an adequate heart rate to deliver the cardiac output that we need to keep the heart, to keep the blood pumping. Yes or no? Yes or no? Should an SA node fail and the AV node takes over, is it enough? Yes or no? No. That's why AV node cannot be a primary pacemaker because the rate is too slow, you're going to be hypotensive. Agree? Agree? So if the SA node fail, AV node takes over, your heart rate is slow. If there's AV block, your heart rate is slow. The patient is hypotensive, right? The patient can get dizzy, had syncope, all right? And stuff like that, all right? So 40 to 60 per minute. The other thing is, the other good thing with AV node, it's not only a backup, all right? It's not only a backup. It also can regulate, regulate. When I say regulate, can control in a way, all right? The rhythm or the pacing that goes to the ventricles. So when the SA node fires, it goes to the AV node, and the AV node tries to think, filter, right? And say, hold on, is this normal or abnormal? If it's normal, I'm going to send it to the ventricle. You got it? Because if, if it's abnormal, then that should not go to the ventricle, right? AV node protects the ventricles by filtering the rhythm, right? Because sometimes SA node is not always right. What if the SA node starts pumping 200? Is that good or bad for the heart? Good or bad? Remember whether the heart rate, I'm sorry, why did it do that? All right. Oops, I'm sorry. Why did it do that? Let's go back. Okay. Whether the heart rate, all right, whether the heart rate is increased or decreased, that is not both good to the heart, right? Because it will affect the cardiac output will be a problem, right? Agree? Because part of the cardiac output is the heart rate. Agree? So guys, if the SA node is pumping 200, you told me it's bad. Agree? Right? But good thing with AV node, it can filter. It can receive those 200 and distribute it to the atria where it doesn't cause much effect and probably deliver to the ventricles around 80 to 100. Right? So question, did the AV node protect the ventricle? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? So it could not only conduct normal rates from SA node, it can also protect the AV node, all right? All right, so hold on. Are we streaming good in the live stream? Because I think some people are still uh, a little behind. You got it? You got it, nurses? All righty. Again, again, again. What is the secondary node? that protects your ventricles in case SA node misfires. All right, what is the secondary node that protects the ventricles in case the SA node misfires? Go. I'm very good. All right, so there's a little delay in our in our stream here. The AV node. How much can AV node give in a minute? How much can AV node give in a minute? How much can AV node give in a minute? 40 to 60. I'm, I'm experiencing a little delay with uh, with the stream yard. Um, something wrong with the stream yard. But 40 to 60, very good. So... <clears throat> If the AV node takes over as a primary pacemaker, is it good for the heart or bad for the heart? I'm just refreshing what I said. If the AV node takes over as a primary pacemaker, is it good for the heart or bad for the heart? Hmm. 
It's bad for your heart. Very good. I'm waiting for your answers, guys, whenever I pause, okay? So now, there's another thing you need to remember for AV node. Yes, it protects the heart, right? Yes, it protects your, um, your ventricles, but sometimes it overdoes it to where, for example, the SA node gives about 60, and that's normal rate. The AV node effectively blocks it and sends to the ventricles 20. Is that good or bad? AV node. Is that good or bad? 60 is normal, but the AV node abnormally filtered that rate and sent to the heart 20. Is that good or bad? Bad. That's called AV block, right? 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 And sometimes your SA node could be beating normal. SA node could be beating 80, but AV node is misfiring and creating extra rhythm to where now it's 200 and it brings to the ventricles 200. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? Bad. This one is called block. It blocked the SA node, it slowed it down, right? This one is also bad. That's called supraventricular tachycardia, where the SA node is misfiring. SA node said, let's give 80. AV node said, let's give 200. You got it? You got it, guys? You got it? Everybody, you got it? Yes? I'm giving you an overview already of what AV block means and what SVT means, all right? It all originates in the AV node area, all right? If there's a sinus um, or SA node problem, sinoatrial node problem, we call it sinus rhythm. It could be sinus tachycardia, sinus bradycardia. If there's an AV node problem, then those are your supraventricular tachycardias. It could also be ATACs, atrial tachycardia like AFib, A-flutter, or it could also be AV block if it's too slow. You got it? You got it? Now, after the AV node, let's now move forward. We now go to the bundle of his. We have left and right bundle and towards the final part, which are the Purkinje fibers. Let's write it down here. Purkinje, oops, all right. Purkinje, my writing is sloppy right now. Purkinje fibers. I don't know why it's doing that. I think I need to restart the iPad, all right? Anyway, for Purkinje fibers, you see that, guys? Purkinje fibers. So Purkinje fibers are the final fibers at the end of the ventricular fibers, right? However, there are, they are called tertiary pacemaker, third pacemaker, but they can only generate 20 to 40. Is it enough for the heart or no? To deliver consistent cardiac output? I don't know why it's doing that. Is it enough for the heart to deliver consistent cardiac output? Yes or no? 20 to 40? Is it enough for the heart to deliver the cardiac output that we need? Yes or no? Hello? No. All right. I think I'm having stream issues with StreamYard. I'm like, um, I don't know if I'm 30 minutes behind. I'm just kidding. No. All right. So let's recap, let's recap. Primary pacemaker, go. Primary pacemaker, go. So Purkinje fibers can create its own rhythm, all right? It's just not enough. So that's why SA node should still always take the lead. That's why in the cases of tachycardias, we defibrillate the patient, right? To stop all that rhythm so that SA node can take over because SA node is a primary pacemaker, all right? So again, 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 SA node, very good. Primary pacemaker. What is the secondary pacemaker? Secondary pacemaker. Secondary pacemaker is? AV node, very good. What's the tertiary pacemaker? Tertiary pacemaker. We're recapping it. We're recapping it. Something is wrong with my um, public stream. It's 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 kind of pretty slow, but it's okay. We're backing it up in the in the thing anyway. I'll probably post this on my YouTube channel, guys. AV node, all right. F final fiber, final fiber is called the Purkinje fiber. Purkinje fiber, all right. 
How many rate per minute can your SA node deliver? Rate per minute for SA node, rate per minute for SA node. Sixty to one hundred. How many minutes? How many rate per minute for your AV node? Forty to sixty. How many minutes for your? Um, how many rate per minute for your Purkinje fiber? How many? Perkinji fiber. Perkinji. Perkinji. I think we're having stream issues. Some people are still answering as a note. 20 to 40. All right. So very good. That's your cardio conduction system. And then, of course, let's move forward. Okay. Um, let's talk about your EKG strip itself. All right. You see small squares, big squares, right? EKG strip can tell us plenty of things. It can tell us the millivolts, all right? It can also tell us the um, time, all right? How fast, how slow the heart can beat, right? So now you see the EKG. Who gets intimidated with an EKG strip here? Be honest. Be honest. Who gets intimidated with an EKG strip? I love EKG strips, all right? When I was in the ER... And even now, as my practice in urgent care, I do a lot of EKGs. I just did an EKG for a lady last night, and I figured she was having right bundle branch block that she was never diagnosed with. So I put her a referral for cardiology to perform more tests, all right? But, yep, yeah, who gets intimidated with EKG? Just one from the live crowd? Just five from my students? Then I don't think we need to do the class. <laughs> All right, let me put it here. All right, so when I was new, I got intimidated with EKGs too, all right? In fact, I think one of the things that scare me in ER is the EKG, right? That's why that became my motivation to be good with EKG. I'm that type of a person where if something's very challenging to me, all right, if, someone in, if something intimidates me or scares me, then I want to excel in that area so it doesn't scare me anymore. You know, that, you know that? I know some people are like, oh, it intimidates me. I don't want to study it. No, I'm different. I use that negative energy as a motivation for me to learn more. So I started learning more. I started learning, attending classes, listening to cardiologists, attending EKG certifications, right? So um, that's it. And I simply love EKG. In fact, if I wasn't a family nurse practitioner, urgent care nurse practitioner, I would probably be a cardiology nurse practitioner, right? Because that's my favorite system in the body, the heart, right? And I feel like cardiology is something that really, really interests me, right? But um, I love EKG, right? But I'm not the best. Of course, I'm not a cardiologist. I don't have a fellowship of five years just to read the heart rhythm, but I can definitely tell the basics. And if I know there's something wrong, I can honestly refer that to the cardiology. But let's look at the strip so we don't get intimidated, all right? So in this strip, all right, going upward, all right, going upward is your millivolts, such that one box is 0.1 millivolt, right? One box is one millivolt. So 10 boxes is one millivolt, all right? Going upward is millivolts, all right? But we're not worried about that. We're going to be worried about the x-axis right here, which is the time. You got it? Going upward is millivolts. Do not worry about that. It just tells you how strong the contraction or the rhythm is. We're going to be more worried about time because time tells us everything. Is the heart beating fast? Is the heart beating slow? Is the heart regular? Is it irregular? You got it? You got it? So let's talk about the time, all right? One small square, you see that one small square right here, all right? All right? That one small square right there, all right, is equivalent to 0 0.04. I'm going to write it down here, 0 0.04 seconds, all right? 0 0.04 seconds. 
if you are using a an EKG machine, it might tell you how many milliseconds is 0 0.04 seconds. How many milliseconds is 0.4 milliseconds? Por, how many milliseconds is that? Anyone know? 0 0.04 is 40 milliseconds, all right? But for consistency, we're going to use seconds because it's easier to understand seconds than milliseconds, right? But modern EKG could tell you milliseconds. But for, e for consistency, we're going to use seconds because it's easier to understand seconds and minutes, right? And heart rate is computed by minute, all right? Otherwise, we're going to be computing a lot. I mean, I, I can honestly tell you that, but people get confused a lot with millisecond, second, and minute. All right, now, 0 0.04 seconds. Five small boxes. Look here, look here, right? You see five small boxes right there? Yes or no? Yes or no? Multiply that to five is what? One large box, right? One large box is equivalent to how much? Four times five is what? Is what? Point 0.20 seconds. Point 0.20 seconds. You got it? You got it? So small box, point zero 0.04 seconds. All right? Five small boxes is one large box. Point 0.20 seconds. Let's recap. Let's recap because we're going to be counting this later. All right? Small boxes is how many seconds? Go. Small boxes is how many seconds? Go. Come on, come on. And then later, guys, we're going to do EKG drills, okay? I'm going to show you strips, and we're going to read it after we go through all of these. I'm still in the basics part. After one hour, we're going to move to the disorder. I'm in the introduction part, so please bear with me. It's a little slow pacing. I know some of you guys are fast learners and ultra-fast learners, but bear with me. Point zero 0.04, very good. Five small boxes equals one large box. One large box? One large box is how many seconds? Go. One large box is how many seconds? Very good. Very good. Very good to my students right there. Very good to the one in the live stream. Their answers coming out right now. Guys, refresh your uh, refresh your streams, all right? Because some of you guys are still answering the question from previous question. So your stream might be slow, all right? But for Zoom, Zoom people in the Zoom, it's very good. We're doing it real time. So 0 0.20, 0 0.04, 0 0.20, all right? Now, what if I put five large boxes together? Five large boxes together. Five large boxes form how many? Times five large boxes is how many? Five large boxes, 0.20 becomes one second. And now we can easily monitor that's not double C, that's single C, guys, all right? One second strip, one second strip, right? And now we can easily check the heart rate because we now know how many boxes are there in one second. You got it? Again, five large boxes is equivalent to what? One second. And now you can count the heart rate from that, right? Right? So if you count, this is one, this is one large box. If I add more, one, two, right? Three, four. I'm counting here because the box is there is five. So that's one second, another second. This is a three second strip. You got it? I'm sorry, my writing is all over the place. My my like I said, I was trying to tweak my Apple pencil since last night. I still it stayed till one o'clock to try to restart everything. It didn't work. So now it's all over the place. All right. Three second strip. The, the strip that you see in your screen right now is three seconds. Agree? Agree? Yes. Okay. Again, recap, recap, recap. One small square or one small box, one small box, one small box, one small box. Point zero 0.04. Five small boxes equal one large box. Is how many? Point twenty and five large boxes is, is equal to what? One second strip. All right, one second strip. Very good. 
All righty. Now let's talk about how we count the heart rate. There are two ways that you can count the heart rate in an EKG. And this is very important because we're going to count the heart rate er, uh, later. Now that you know how to measure time in terms of the strip, we're going to focus on time. We're not going to focus on millivolts. We're going to focus on time. And we've just reviewed the time, all right? We now can count the heart rate. There are two ways, all right? The first one is called R to R. So what we do there, I'm going to explain. It's already on your screen, right? What we do there is you check one R to another R. You check how many large boxes are there in between one R to another R. Let's start the, here, right? This R right here is right over the line. You see that? Yes or no? Yes or no? This one right here is right over the line. So it's easier to monitor, right? And the other R is somewhere here, right? Guys, how many large boxes are there? How many large boxes? How many large boxes? Can anyone see? Can anyone see? How many large boxes are there? Three large boxes. You guys see that? I'm going to teach you guys how to count R2. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, my God. All right. I'm sorry. I'm, this is terrible. There we go. Count R to R. Three large boxes. Agree? Three and three large boxes and one very tiny box, right? So very tiny box or small box. Three large boxes. So using that information, we're going to memorize the constants. The constants are 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 42, such that if there's one box difference between R to R, 300. Two boxes, 150. Three boxes, 100. 4, 75. 5, 50, 60. 6, 50. 7, 42. And so on and so forth. You got what I mean, right? So again, one large box difference between R to R. That's about 300 heart rate per minute. Per minute, okay? 2 is 150. 3 is 100. 4 is 75. Then 60. Then 50. Then 42. Now, going back to the screen, how many large boxes? There's three, right? There's three, correct? How, how many is the heart rate? What is your heart rate? Using three boxes, check your constant. What is your heart rate? Using that information. Anyone? 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 Using that information, what is your heart rate basing on the strip in front of you? We have answers already coming through. I want more answers. I want more people to give me answers. Very good. Do we all agree? It's about 100. Yes or no? Yes. But because we also have one tiny or small box there, let's say around 90. All right? 80, 90 to 95. 90 to 95. I'd say it's between 90 to 95, not exactly 100 because there's still a tiny box after. Right? Right? You got it? You got it? Yes? Now, here's my question to you, and let's be practical. Let's be practical. Can you memorize all those numbers? I've been teaching EKG for more than 15 years, and sometimes I still forget the numbers. Can you memorize them? 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 42, 35, right? Can you memorize them? If you're in a high-pressure environment and your patient's having VTACs or AFibs, and you're like, uh, five boxes, uh, 300, 150, 100, 90, 80, uh, uh, hold on, hold on, 300, 150, 140, 130, uh, hold on, hold on. Guys, your patient would have been dead already, right? Right? For me, the more you memorize, the more you forget. Agree? Agree? Yes or no? Yes or no? That's why to my students, what I always tell you guys, don't memorize. Understand. The more numbers that we memorize as nurses, the more we forget them, right? Do we love numbers as nurses? I think that's the part that we, that, that's why we went nursing, right? We didn't do accountancy. We didn't do major in math, right? Because we, 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 don't, we don't like it, right? We, we don't like um, numbers, right? So guys, here's an easy way to remember, all right? During your, for example, you're taking an NCLEX and you're timed, right? Don't do R to R. You're going to forget that. You're going to make a mistake. Do the second option. The second option, all right, what you're going to do is count all the R's in a six-second strip. Sir, how do I know if it's a six-second strip? Well, count your boxes, right? Remember one large box is how many seconds? 
How many um, how many seconds? Large box, large box, large box, large box. Large box is how many seconds? Point 20. Agree? Yes. And five large boxes is how many seconds? Five large boxes is how many seconds? Hello? Hello? I'm gonna put my um zoom camera here. That that would be okay. There you go. So I can look at you guys. All right. All right, much better, all right? Yes, one second, very good. So guys, using that information, I'm gonna count, all right? That's one large box, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, one second, right? 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, two seconds, right? 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, Six seconds. Is this a six second strip? Yes or no? Yes or no? Is this a six second strip? Yes or no? Here's another technique. All right. In your actual EKG, every three seconds, you see a line at the bottom, right? You see a little black line at the bottom. That's called your three second marker. You agree? Yes or no? So every see every time you see a line, those boxes are three second, three second. Oops. Sorry about that. Oops. What is going on with you? Three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. Now, we have a six-second strip. This is very easy, guys. You just multiply it by 10. Why 10? Somebody asked me, why 10? Uh, I don't know. I just follow the rules, all right? I just follow the rules. No, no kidding. It's because six seconds times 10, six seconds times 10 is 60 seconds, which is one minute, right? And we're checking the heart rate by the minute, right? So that's your six second strip. The rule is count all the R's. How many R's did we see? Those are your peaks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many R's did you see, guys? How many R's did you see? Nine, right? Times how many? How many? 10. What's your heart rate? Everybody, what's your heart rate? I have a little, I have a strep throat today, okay? I'm taking antibiotics. So my throat is really not in the best shape right now. What's the heart rate? Everybody in the live stream, what's your heart rate? Very good, Aspirers, 90. Very good, Cheryl, how about the others? AJ, very good. We're having a little delay here. All right, I'm gonna have to refresh it during the break. We're gonna take a little break later to refill my coffee. So. I have a question for you guys. Which one is easier for you, option one or option two? If you're taking the NCLEX and you have a few seconds to review it, you have a few seconds to review it, which one is faster for you? If you have a patient who's having chest pain in front of you and you only have a few seconds to read it so you can call the doctor right away, which one is easier for you, right? I think the easier one for me is number two, right? That's for me. But it's okay. It's only an approximation. In a hospital setup, you should have a telemetry connected to your pulse or EKG on the chest. It counts the heart rate more accurately. And if you look at your EKG report, at the top of EKG report, guys, right? At the top of EKG report, it says heart rate. Agree? Yes or no? Yes? But this is just to give you an overview because later, as we move along to the dysrhythmias, you have to know the rate. If you know the rate, then you can find out what rhythm it is because some rhythms are abnormally slow, some rhythms are abnormally high. Are we clear? Questions, preguntas, in Filipino tanong, yes or no? Questions, nada, nothing. All right, agree? All right. Okay, now let's go to your basics of EKGs, all right? Okay, now we're going to talk about the different waves that you see in there, all right? Let me see if I can write through it. P, that's your P. Q, R, S, we always bundle them together. R is always the highest peak. In some leads, you might see the R going down. That's totally normal because some of the leads are negative um, depolarization or negative charge. So you will see that. But anything that's tall is R wave. You got it? That's why earlier I said count all the R's. And someone asked, what is R? 
or anything that's tall, whether it's going upward or downward, that's your R wave, all right? But QRS, we bundle them together, the T wave and abnormally U wave. U wave is abnormal, all right? Abnormal, we're going to talk about that later, right? So we have the P, Q, R, S, T, all right? The P to R, all right, until the first of Q is called the atrial phase, atrial phase, all right? From Q to T is called the ventricular phase, ventricular phase, all right? So that is easy to remember, ventricular, all right? That is easy to remember. Whenever you have a problem in the P or PR, where is the problem coming from, atrial or ventricular? Whenever there's an abnormality to the P or to the PR, what is the origin? of the problem atrial or ventricular i'm giving you guys overview already so later it's going to be easier to read ekgs again if the problem starts from the p or pr the problem originates from the atrial what if the problem is in qrs or t or st segment then where is the problem coming from atrial or ventricular atrial or ventricular I want everybody to participate so we can move on to the next topic, ventricular. So atrial for P, P, R, Q, R, S, T is ventricular. That's it. All right. That's one way to remember. Remember, I'm already giving you tips. So later we can review them. All righty. Good. Okay. Now, another thing. All right. Let's connect it to your conduction system. What's the primary pacemaker again? What's the primary pacemaker? What's the primary pacemaker? SA node. So SA node, when that starts pumping your heart, from the pacing that it does, that's your P wave. SA node is the P wave, right? Somebody said, please repeat, please repeat. Again, let's repeat it, all right? P and PR talks about atrial phase. QRST talks about ventricular phase, all right? Again, P, PR talks about atrial, Q, R, S, T, ventricular. Remember this because we're going to read EKGs later. So that's why let's apply that. Let's apply that learning, right? When you have a problem with P or PR, where is the problem? Atria or ventricle? Again, when there's a problem with P or PR, somebody requested me to repeat it. Where is the problem? When we have a problem with P, or PR, where is the problem? It already says on the screen. What? Atrial. Entiendes? Understood? All right, atrial. What if the problem starts from the Q, R, S, S, T, T? Where is the problem? Q, guys, it's already on the screen. You just look at it, Q, R, S, T, ventricular ventricular you got it you got it recall first just remember it first and we're gonna dissect it as we go further it's just an introduction remember you got it guys again 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 all right problems with p p r is atrial or ventricular you don't have to type the whole thing guys you can just even type the first letter and i would understand it honestly so we can do it faster all right, because I know some people type like this A, A, uh, uh, T, R, 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 uh, backspace, 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 backspace. Right? <laughs> We're not going to finish. You can just put first letter. Again, if the problem is P, P, R, it is where? Atrial or ventricular? Atrial. Very good. If the problem is Q, R, S, or T, Q, R, S, T, where is the problem? Atrial or ventricular? Atrial or ventricular? Atrial or ventricular? I didn't understand anything, sir, but R. Atrial or ventricular? Ventricular. All right, can you follow? Can you follow? This is just an overview. Remember it first. Remember it first, okay? Now let's connect it to your conduction system. Conduction system, all right? Again, SA node, listen to me first, and then we're going to recall later. SA node talks about the P wave. AV node talks about the PR interval. 
and your Purkinje fiber. Purkinje fiber talks about your whole QRST. All right? SA node, AV node, Purkinje fiber. You got it? You got it? Again, P is SA node. PR is AV node. QRST, that's your whole Purkinje fiber because that's the ventricles. You got it? Again, one more time. P is SA node. PR is AV node. QRST is Purkinje fiber. All right? You got it? Okay. Using the first letters only, tell me if it is SA node S, AV node A, Purkinje fiber P. You guys ready? QRST. What? What facing are we looking at? Or what fiber are we looking at? Purkinje, otherwise known as the ventricular fibers. Agree? Agree? Yes or no? Purkinje, right? Purkinje. I agree. How about P wave? P wave. P. P. What are we looking at? What conduction system are we looking at? P. 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 Why is everybody saying P? <laughs> oh, the live stream is delayed. Something is wrong with the live stream. It's really, really delayed. SA node. Very good. How about PR? PR. 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 PR talks about AV node. Again, P wave talks about SA node. PR interval talks about AV node. QRST talks about Purkinje or ventricular. You guys understand it? Yes or no? All right. This is an overview. Let's now go to individual waves. We're going to go to individual waves. I'm going to delete the screen right now. All right? Okay. Now let's talk about P wave. P wave talks about, oops, sorry about that. What happened? Okay. P wave talks about, all right, all right, atrial depolarization. Depolarization. What is depolarization, guys? When I say depolarize, is it contract or relax? Is it contract or relax? Is it contract or relax? You see that little bump? It means the atria contracted, right? Agree? Agree? There's a little delay. And guys, um, for those in, in the public view, refresh your screen. Come on. Refresh your screen. Some of you guys are a little delayed, like literally answering me two to three minutes later. Some people are still answering SA node, AV node. We've already moved on. All right. All right. Very good. Okay. So P talks about atrial depolarization, otherwise known as contraction. Agree? Contraction. And I already explained that. Remember, P wave is what fiber or what conduction nerve? SA. That's it. When the SA fires, the atria contracts. When the SA fires, the atria contracts. When the SA fires, the atria contracts. Agree? You guys agree, nurses? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So that's it. That's atrial depolarization. Let's talk about QRS. QRS is somewhere here. QRS. That's your whole QRS, right? So QRS, guys, talks about what do you think it is? If there's atrial depolarization, there is ventricular depolarization, right? Depolarization. That's your Purkinje fibers, which means when the SA node pumped, it moved all the way to the Purkinje, and now your ventricular is pumped, right? Atrial pumping, ventricular pumping, P wave, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS. You got it? P, QRS. Look at me, P, QRS. Question, does the atria and ventricles, do they pump at the same time? Yes or no? Yes or no? Do they pump at the same time? I mean, using your EKG information on the screen, is it a yes or a no? That's like a true or false question. Do they pump at the same time? No. There's a little delay because as they know, need to travel all the way to Purkinje. That's your P. That's your QRS. 
Speak your S. Speak your S. Speak your S. Speak your S. You got it? You got it? You got it? And now let's go to the final wave, the T. All right? The T, what is the T? Guys, if depolarization is contraction, then what is repolarization? What is repolarization? Relaxation, right? This is where the heart contracts, but the heart needs to relax as well, right? It's a muscle. If it doesn't relax, it's not going to contract again. Agree? So, guys, remember that your T wave, all right? This is your ventricular repolarization, all right? Repolarize, relax, all right? So, ventricular repolarization, ventricular repolarization, all right? What about atrial repolarization? Atrial repolarization is no longer important in EKG. It happens the same time as QRS. Sorry about that. That was not intentional. It happens same time as QRS right here. Why does it keep doing that? I'm sorry, guys. It's not supposed to do that. All right. <clears throat> It happens same time as QRS. We don't see that anymore because it happens same time QRS. Plus, atrial repolarization is not important. In the EKGs, we focus more on the ventricles. Why? Because the ventricles are the ones that's delivering blood to the systemic circulation. Agree? Yes or no? What's more important, atria or ventricles? I mean, both are equally important, but not, not equally important. Both are important. But what's more important? Atria or ventricles in terms of circulation, in terms of cardiac output, in terms of pushing that blood to the system, it's your ventricles. That's why we focus more on checking ventricular function in the EKG than the atria. You got it? Okay, now let's review. You tell me if this um, atrial depolarization, that's AD, ventricular depolarization, VD, or ventricular repolarization, VR. You tell me, tell me if it's AD, VD, or VR. I'm going to tell you guys, all right? I'm going to tell you if it's atrial or ventricular depolarization, repolarization. You tell me if it's AD, VD, VR. You ready? You ready? Okay, which one is T wave? T, T, T as in tango. T as in tango. T as in tango. Go. T as in tango. T as in tango. T as in tango, ventricular repolarization. All right. How about atrial? I'm sorry. QRS, QRS. Oh, that's meant to say atrial depolarization. QRS, 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 QRS. I'm still waiting for other people to answer. They're still figuring it out, or they're still waiting for other people to. To answer so they can copy it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. QRS. Joanne, it's already on your screen. Diana, it's already on your screen. Ventricular depolarization. All right. How about <clears throat> P wave? P wave. P, 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 P. Before I delete it, come on. Atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. You got it? Again, again, again. More quickly. Faster this time. Faster this time. Faster. Ready? QRS. I'm only going to give you guys five seconds. QRS. One, two, three, four, five. T wave. One, two. Three, four, five. B wave. One, two, three, four, five. P as in Papa. All right. Okay. So now let's add some more. Let's sprinkle some more ingredients. All right. Now that we've learned the basic... Um, the basic waves, let's not talk about the intervals, all right? You see the interval between P and Q is called PR interval, right? PR interval starts from the start of P until the start of Q. That's called PR interval. What is PR interval? I'm going to write it, right? PR interval is the time or speed of transmission 
from of transmission transmission from SA node to Purkinje fibers, all right? Or atria to ventricles. You got it? You got it, nurses? Yes. Um, yeah, John Paul also noticed that chat box is loaded, so I guess those folks answering are a bit delayed. Yes, I think there's some delay in the live stream. I don't know, though, but some people can answer me real time. Some people are answering me delayed. So I'm not sure if it's my streaming issue or anything else. But anyway, so PR again is the time or the speed of transmission from SA node to Purkinje fibers. You got it? How fast it is. You got it, nurses? Again, the time or speed of transmission from SA node to Purkinje fibers. Remember that first, all right? Now, here's my question. If the PR is prolonged, wider, longer, does it mean that the heart rate is fast or slow? Does it mean that the heart rate is fast or slow? If the PR is prolonged and PR talks about the speed of transmission and the PR is prolonged, wider, getting longer, is the heart rate fast or slow? Fast or slow? Analyze, analyze, analyze. I've only seen less than 10 answers so far, and we have more than 150 people combined watching me from my students to the live stream. That means it's slow. You got it? You got it? So watch out. Prolonged PR interval might tell you that there's an AV block Combining it together, remember, PR talks about AV node, right? PR talks about AV node. And prolonged PR can tell you that it is an AV, and we call it block, because the AV node is blocking the impulse from SA node going to Purkinje. You got it? We talked about that earlier, right? Okay, so that's PR interval. Another interval, right? Another interval, and there's different AV blocks. There's first, second, third degree. We're going to go to that later. So please bear with me. This is going to be three to four hours, okay? Um, another one, guys. You see this ST? You see that angle right there? That's called ST segment. ST segment talks about uh, the beginning. Beginning. Okay, beginning. Something is wrong. All right, beginning. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys of beginning of ventricular repolarization all right beginning of ventricular i think my apple pencil is already um um not performing good so i'm going to change it later all right so guys the beginning of ventricular repolarization i don't know what that is all right Beginning of ventricular repolarization. Write it down. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. So, guys, basically what it's telling you is that's the time of how the ventricles are repolarizing. It's just showing you that the ventricles are repolarizing. After it contracts, it rests for a bit, and then it repolarizes. After it contracts, it rests for a bit, and then it repolarizes. You know, very important. As a segment is very important when detecting MI, all right? What is MI, guys? Is that is that a dead tissue or necrosis in the heart tissue? Yes or no? Is that a necrosis? I don't know what's going on with my pen. Is that a necrosis to the heart tissue? Yes or no? Yes? When there's a necrosis to the heart tissue, the heart contracts, but it could not repolarize properly because there's a wound. There's a wound. If there's a wound to the heart muscle, that creates a lot of electrical firing, all right? So that's why they can have VTAX as well or VFIT, right? The problem is the heart will not repolarize properly, right? You will see what we call ST elevation where the ST is like that, all right? That is a symptom of MI. But it's not only MI, electrolyte changes like hyperkalemia can also show that, all right? But then again, ST segment is very important when talking about MI. If you're taking your NCLEX soon, that's one of the things that come out in the NCLEX, all right? And I'm going to give you examples later, okay? 
So again, ST talks about the beginning of ventricular repolarization. You see abnormal ST, it means the heart is not relaxing properly, right? You see an abnormal ST segment, it means the heart is not relaxing properly. So put it in perspective, analyze what you just learned. If the heart is not relaxing properly, can it contract properly as well? Yes or no? Yes or no? If the heart cannot relax properly, there's an ST abnormality. Can the heart contract properly as well? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Will the contraction, will the contraction be affected because the relaxation is not achieved properly? Yes. So no, it will not contract properly. Yes, the contraction will be affected. That's the answer to my question. You got it? So ST is very important. It gives you an overview. It gives you an overview if the heart is ready to relax properly. And of course, the last one is QT. What is QT, guys? What is QT segment? What is QT segment? What is QT? QT, what is QT? Aside from me, QT, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, some people didn't get it. So Google it so you understand. QT talks about what? <clears throat> QT talks about the whole cycle or complete cycle. Whole cycle, whole cycle. This is a mess. I don't know what's going on with my iPad right now. I'm going to have to restart it. Whole cycle of ventricular depolarization or depolarization, ventricular depolarization to ventricular repolarization, all right? To ventricular repolarization. You got it? Whole cycle of ventricular depolarization to ventricular repolarization. So it just tells you the whole ventricular cycle. When you talk about QT, it tells you if the ventricles are contracting and relaxing properly. Contracting, relaxing properly. Contracting, relaxing properly. All right? If there's a prolonged QT, that's dangerous because that means the heart is taking a while to contract very, very slowly and relax very, very slowly. All right? Prolonged QT is bad. It means the heart is contracting slowly and relaxing slowly. You got it? You got it, nurses? Okay, let's review what's on the screen. You tell me if this P, Q, R, S, T, P, R, S, T, or Q, T. You guys ready? You tell me if this P, Q, R, S, T, P, R, S, T, or Q, T. You guys ready? All right, which one is... The speed of transmission from ventricular, uh, I'm sorry, from SA node to Purkinje fibers. Speed of transmission from SA to Purkinje. Speed of transmission from SA to Purkinje. Speed of transmission from SA to Purkinje. Anyone? Anyone? Where are my live stream people? PR. Very good. Which one talks about ventricular repolarization? Ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization. Repolarization. Arnold, change your answer. Jacqueline, change your answer. Ventricular repolarization. It's on the screen. The key is on the screen. No, guys, no, no. I'm talking about ventricular repolarization. I'm not talking about the beginning, all right? I'm talking about the ventricular repolarization itself it's on the screen ventricular repolarization itself is the t wave you got a t as in tango t which one is ventricular d polarization ventricular d polarization ventricular d polarization or contraction 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 this is this is this is QRS, very good. QRS. How about atrial depolarization? Atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. That is, that is, that is the what? The P wave, right? P wave. How about the beginning of ventricular repolarization? The beginning of ventricular repolarization. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. ST, very good. Which is the whole cycle of VDEP to VREP 
or whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation, whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation, whole cycle of ventricular contraction or repolarization. What is that? What is that? Okay, let's review that again. That's QT. Now without a key on your screen, let's do it very quickly. I'm gonna tell you the EKG meaning. You tell me what wave. Is it P, Q, R, S, T, S, T, P, R, Q, T. All right, ready? Ready? Which one talks about atrial depolarization? Atrial depolarization, come on, come on. Atrial depolarization, come on. It's P wave, as in Paul P, right? Which one talks about beginning of ventricular repolarization? Beginning of ventricular repolarization. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. That is, that is, that is your ST. ST, ST, right? What is your ventricular depolarization? Ventricular depolarization. Ventricular depolarization. What is that? Who said arsenal <laughs> in the chat? Depolarization, ventricular depolarization or contraction. What is that? QRS, QRS. Which one talks about the speed of transmission speed of transmission from sa to the ventricles from sa to the ventricles sa to the ventricles what is that speed of transmission from sa to the ventricles what is that pr interval what talks about the whole cycle whole cycle whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation Whole cycle of ventricular contraction or relaxation. Whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation. That is QT. What is atrial depolarization again? Atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization. Uh oh, why are we all over the place? We just reviewed this earlier. Atrial depolarization is P. Ventricular depolarization. Ventricular depolarization. It's okay. You guys can watch this in my YouTube, all right? QT. QT. Very good. Ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization. T wave. T wave. Beginning of ventricular repolarization. Beginning, beginning of ventricular repolarization. ST, what is the speed of impulse transmission? Speed from SA node to ventricles. Speed from SA node to ventricles. Speed from SA node to ventricles. Speed of transmission from SA node to ventricles. Speed of SA node to ventricles. I think the chat is muddled in the live stream because some people are delayed. The speed is PR interval, PR interval, PR interval. Right? What is the whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation? Whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation. Speed. I'm sorry. Whole cycle of ventricular contraction and relaxation. QT. All right? QT. All right. Let's have about a 10-minute break. Let me just refill my coffee, do bladder break. We're going to talk about 12 lead EKG, and we're going to start this with me. Okay? 10-minute break. All right, everybody who's ready to restart, say, yes, I can. I have to refresh my screen too, but. <clears throat> All right, and for those who are in live stream, please kindly um, refresh your screen so we can do it real time. We're about to do this again, very good. I think everybody's ready. There you go. All righty. 
So I made I made sure that I got my cup of coffee right here, and that also I refreshed my screen. So hopefully it's gonna work better now. All right, thank you. All righty, because there was a lot of um, delay earlier. Um, I think a lot of people also had to exit. Okay, and uh, anyway, no sound. All right, so people don't hear me in the Zoom. Let me see. Show your computer with audio, yes. All right, you guys hear me now? All right, everybody who's ready say yes, I can. All right, now, <clears throat> so we reviewed the basics earlier and let me just mention the times that we measure, okay? So remember PR interval, can anyone tell me what PR interval is again? B very briefly, you don't have to type the whole thing. What is PR interval again? All right. So PR interval. Okay, one second. All right. PR interval, guys, remember, is your speed of transmission from SA node to Purkinje, right? Yes? Very good. So PR interval is about um, point <clears throat> 12 to point. 20 seconds, all right? PR interval. The QRS, I forgot to mention QRS, QRS interval, or just the QRS, all right? Should be around less than 0.12 seconds, all right? So less than 0.12 seconds. And the QT, these are the three things that we can men, um, measure, particularly in your EKG. You see this a lot, all right? But the QT intervals could be between 0.32 to 0.44 seconds, all right? So that's it. Those are your intervals, QRS, your PR, and QT, okay? Now remember the boxes, the small boxes, how many seconds? The small boxes, how many seconds? Can anyone remember? Point, point? Zero four. I think people are starting to come back in. All right, point zero four. And for those who missed it, I think I decided I'll just I'll just upload it to um to uh, YouTube. All right, sometime within the week we'll have to cut the times where we have technical errors. We're gonna post process it. Point zero four. All right, point zero four. And one large box is how many seconds again? Point 0.20, right? How many seconds? Point 0.20. All right. So instead of memorizing point 0.12, point 0.12 to point 0.20, point 0.32, point 0.44, we're just going to use number of boxes because I think that's easier to remember. Such that QRS interval should be less than three boxes for QRS interval. PR interval should be between three to five boxes. And QT interval should be between um eight to ten it's actually less than 12 boxes all right so less than 12 boxes all right so that's it any anything more than 12 boxes for qt interval is called prolonged qt any pr interval that's more than five boxes is called prolonged pr any qrs that's more than three boxes is called widened qrs you got it nurses Using the boxes, because now we know the time, but it's easier to remember boxes. It's hard to remember 0.12 to 0.20. It's easier to remember three to five boxes. Again, how many boxes should the QRS be? QRS, normal QRS should be how many boxes? Less than three. You got it? If it's more than three, what is it called? wide qrs you got it okay how about pr interval pr interval pr interval how many boxes how many boxes oh thank you for the heart guys thank you for the heart to so those who are giving me the hearts thank you they didn't realize that they gave me the heart <laughs> is that hard <laughs> Three to five boxes, not more than five boxes, Melanie. Three to five boxes for PR interval. 
How about for QT interval? How about for QT interval? Remember that because we're going to use them later. These information we're going to use later. Less than 12 boxes. All righty. Okay. Well, let's continue. All right. Let's now go to your 12 lead EKG. We're going to see why 12 lead EKG is important. All right. All right. Let's see this. Why is it not flipping? Oops. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, something wrong with my screen now. There you go. Okay. All right. So for 12 lead EKG, guys, let's see this. Okay. You know how to place an EKG? V1. This is very basic. Let's just review this very, very quickly. V1, guys. V1, we place it where? In the right side, fourth intercostal space close to the sternum. All right? Right side, fourth intercostal space close to the sternum. Right side, fourth intercostal space close to the sternum. Sternal border is what we call it. V2 is on the left side, fourth intercostal space. That's one, two, three, four. All right? Sternal border as well. V4 is mid clavicular line under the nipple, right? Under the nipple. V6, or it's it's actually fourth to fifth intercostal space for V4. V6 is also fourth to fifth intercostal space, mid axillary line, mid axillary. All right. So those are your points to remember. Three is between two and four. Five is between. Four and six. That's it. All right? Now, what does it look for? V1 and V2 looks at the septum. All right? So V1 and V2 is septum. V3 and V4 looks at the anterior surface of the heart or front portion of the heart. And V5 and 6 looks at the lateral or side portion of the heart. So if you look at it, guys, all right? If you put your EKG on my chest, if you put S1, a V1 and V2, you're looking at the septum of my heart, right? If there's abnormality to the rhythm, especially this is important for MI to localize where the heart attack is coming from, right? So the doctors would know where to put the catheter or the balloon. So V1 and V2 looks at the septum. V3 and V4 looks at the front portion of the heart or anterior surfaces of the heart, all right? V5 and V6 looks at the lateral portion or side portion of the heart. You got it? What if the problem is posterior? Then we add some more leads. We call it V7, V8, V9. We don't need that a lot. But if the doctor orders 15 lead EKG, then you add V7, V8, V9 to check for posterior portion of the heart. You got it? You got it? Again, V1 and V2 looks where? What is it looking for? What area of the heart is it looking at? The perspective of V1, V2 is it looks where? What portion of the heart? Especially if there's MI there. What is it looking at? Anyone? It's in the septum. Very good. How about V3 and V4? It looks for abnormalities to what surface? What surface? Anterior. Anterior, right? How about, how about V5 and V6? Abnormalities to the what? To the lateral surface. So question for you nurses, all right? Is it important that we place EKG leads in the correct spots? Yes or no? Is it important that we put the EKG leads in the correct spots? Because I've seen some nurses putting EKG everywhere. V1 is way all, all here. V2 is here. Like, how can you read the EKG properly if you misplace those leads? Then we're not getting a good overview of those areas that it's supposed to check. You put V1 here, then it's not looking at the septum anymore. It's looking way too far out. You got it? You got it? Very important. Now let's go to limb leads. All right. Sorry about that. For the limb leads, um, there's only four leads. I know we say 12 leads, but if you look at it, Six plus four, how many is that? 10, right? Six plus four is 10. Then why is it called 12 leads if it's only 10? Because all those four leads 
combined can check the other six leads. All right, I'll tell you guys later. Hold on, hold on. Let's talk about placement first, all right? Placement first. The way I remember it is white is on right. White is on right. Rhyming word, right? White is on right. White is on right. So if white is on right, the black is on the left. You got it? White is on right. White is on right. And if you're not sure, you just check your lead. It says RA, right arm, right? You put it here and you put the other one here. If there's amputation, injuries, burns, wounds, then you can put it on the shoulder. You got it? Where is white? Right. Where is black? Left. White is on right. Black is left. You got it? Now let's go to your um, limb leads or the lower extremity leads, all right? The way to remember it, you have white and green, black and red, right? White and green, black and red. So the way to remember it is snow over grass, snow over grass. You know the snow, right? When it falls, it's on the top of the grass. What's the color of the snow? White. What's the color of the grass? Green. You got it? Snow over grass. And here we have smoke. What's the color of smoke? Black. Smoke over fire. Fire is red or orange. Smoke over fire. Here's the smoke. Here's the fire at the bottom. You got it? You got it? Snow over grass, smoke over fire. That's how you do it, all right? I mean, if you're still confused, again, the limb leads would tell you R-A, R-L, L-A, L-L. You got it? That's it. That's it. And you see the R-L? R-L is called ground. When you say ground, you guys see a tree, three prong. Here in the States, we use a three prong cord, right? The third one is not really... There's no energy there. There's no electric. It's a ground. What's the purpose of that? To prevent, um, uh, what's this? You from getting electrocuted. In the EKG, we can capture extra waves. We call them artifacts, all right? That's the purpose of the green, the RL. The RL is only a ground, all right? It does not do anything other than make sure that we're not getting any extra electrical impulses. Are we clear? So only the three counts. By using RA, LA, and LL, you can actually check different leads, all right? Six more leads. So remember, V1 to V6, look for septum anterior lateral, right? RA, LA, LL will look at the top, bottom, sides, all right? I'm going to show you guys the picture, all right? So just imagine EKG as a 3D picture. Every time you look at one lead, you're looking at one portion of the heart, all right? So what it actually looks like is this, all right? The lead one, lead one is combination of RA and LA. So when it says in your EKG, there's a lead one problem, it's not the V1, all right? It's your RA and LA. RA and LA combined creates the lead one, and it looks at the top portion of your heart right here. Got it? Lead two is the combination of RA and LA. LL, I'm sorry, left leg, right? RA and LL looks at the side portion of the heart. You got it? All right, lead two. And lead three is the combination of LA and LL that's lo looking this way, all right? This way. Sometimes you have arrhythmias or stro uh, not stroke, I'm sorry, MI in these areas. So in short, when you use your limb leads, you're checking top, sides, bottom. You got it? Because this is the bottom part. You got it, nurses? And a AVR is basically augmented, which means there's no actual lead attached to the body. It's electronically computed by the computer. So uh, augmented on the right side, which means it looks this way. So you combine that with lead two, with lead one. Now we complete this side. That's AVR. AVL is augmented to the left. It looks this way. You combine that with lead one and lead three, then you also see this part. And AVF, the way I remember AVF is foot, foot, which is going down or looking from the bottom up. So by doing your limb leads, RA, LA, LL, including the augmented leads, which means virtual, you don't really see it. 
it creates a por um a 3D image of the heart. Combine that with your V leads. V leads look this way. All right? The limb leads look this way. You got it? So combining that together, you see what's going on with the heart. You can actually tell the abnormality and correlate it to what part of the heart it's coming from. You got it, nurses? You got it? So I don't need to explain this too much. I'm just telling you guys that I have 16 FaceTime there. I don't, I don't know why it's there. But um, yep. Okay. But it's just giving you a 3D image of the heart. Okay. You got it? So combine that together, we will now see that, okay, I'll, I'll write that first. I'll give you guys a mnemonic, all right? We'll look at the four portions of the heart, the septum, the anterior, the lateral, and inferior. I call it Sally, all right? So Sally likes to talk about the heart, all right? So Sally is your EKG mnemonic, Sally. Septum is about V1 and V2. Any abnormality to V1 and V2 is a septal problem. You got it? Anterior is V3 and V4. Any problem in V3 and V4 is an anterior heart problem, right? Again, EKG is used to locate where the arrhythmia, dysrhythmia, or heart problem is from. Lateral portions are V5, V6. What else? Lead one, right? Um, lead uh, one, because lead one looks this way, right? And AVL. You see AVL looks this way. That's the lateral portion. So why did you say one is lateral portion? Because, guys, remember the heart is twisted, right? This is, okay, this is your base. This is your apex. So that's the lateral portion. You see the heart is twisted, right? It's twisted. It's not upright. It's not like the lungs and kidneys that are upright. It's twisted, right? Or uh, let's put it the correct word, tilted, tilted to the left. Agree? This is the top. This is the bottom portion. This is the lateral. You got it? You got it, nurses? You got it? Can you, can you correlate it to what we've learned so far? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? Give me a feedback. And inferior is two, three, and L. Two, three, and A, V, and not L, I'm sorry, F. That's why foot, inferior, foot, inferior. All right? So that's it. Because again, the heart is tilted. The top portion is somewhere here. The bottom or apex is somewhere here. So this is your lateral. This is your inferior. All right. Got it. Okay. Thanks for the emoticons momo all right again again let's review let's review all right what leads constitute the septum septum what leads what leads in the 12 lead ekg come on come on come on septum septum come on come on septum what leads some people are typing like this v3 back 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 backspace 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 v backspace 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 <laughs> some people type like this Highlight, right click, copy, right click, paste. <laughs> V1 and V2. Okay, V1 and V2. All right. How about anterior? Anterior. Anterior. V3 and V4. V3 and V4. We still have a little delay with, with the stream yard. I think it's a stream yard issue. V3, V4. As long as you can follow me, okay? How about lateral? Somebody asked me, can you repeat your discussion for the lateral surfaces? V5, V6, what else? What else? There's four leads for lateral. Lateral, it's long. Four leads. V3, V5, I'm sorry, V6. There's four. AVL and lead, lead. One, we use the Roman numeral I, so we're not confused, confusing it with V1, because V1 is one. We use I, all right? I, you got it? Lead V6, V6, V5, I'm sorry, V5, V6, I, and L. You got it? Lateral. You got it? And somebody asked, can you repeat that? Okay, you see the lead one, 
and AVL. L is for lateral, by the way. L is for lateral. That's why it's called AVL. It's augmented V leads of the lateral or chest leads of the lateral. So lateral lead one. Why is one lateral? It looks like it's at the top. Incorrect. The top of the heart is facing the right side. This is the bottom of the heart. The heart is tilted, right? So the heart is tilted. This is your top. This is your bottom. This is your lateral. So what leads are facing that? Lead one. Lead L, and then V5, V6, right? V5, V6, lead one, and lead L. You got it? You got it, nurses? You got it? Oh, how about inferior? Inferior, inferior. I'm going to delete the screen now. Inferior, just look at the heart. Look at the picture and where the arrows are pointing at. Inferior, inferior, come on. Inferior. I, or I'm sorry, two, three, and letter F for foot, inferior, L for lateral. All right, you got it? Did you notice that we didn't include one lead? Did you notice that we didn't include one lead? Thank you, Emerald. Emerald said she, she now, or he now understands it. What did we not include? AVR. AVR. Is called the no man's land. In short, we don't include it. You know why? The AVR is looking where? Look. In the right atria. We rarely get right atrial problem. Right atria is a very, very small portion of the heart. When the blood enters the right atria, they go downward to the right ventricle right away. You got it? So we rarely worry about the right. In fact, we more focus on the left and on the left ventricle because that's the one that's pumping the heart to the system. So don't worry about AVR. There's no condition that correlates to AVR. When you have a right atrial problem, you probably have a right ventricular problem as well because both of them are connected to the right coronary artery. Cut it short, don't worry about AVR. Again, lead V1 and V2. What am I looking at? Just use letters S-A-L-I. S-A-L-I. V1, V2, what part of the heart am I looking at? Am I looking at V1, V2, V1, V2, V1, V2, V1, V2, septum, right? Letter S, septum, right? V3, V4, V3, V4. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What time is it? I don't want to go over time. Okay. V3, V4. <clears throat> what am I looking at? Anterior, letter A, right? How about V5, V6, AVL, lead I or lead 1? What am I looking at? What am I looking at? What am I looking at? V5, V6, AVL, and lead 1. What am I looking at? Lateral surfaces of the heart. Very good. Lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. If, and is anyone doing American Sign Language here? A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, I'm right. F. Inferior. Inferior. Agree? Agree, nurses? Agree? All right. Now, let's apply that. Let's apply. I'm going to show you guys an MI EKG. All right? I'm going to help you identify. You tell me what area you see. I'm going to tell you where the ST elevations are. But you tell me what area is having MI, all right? Okay, so here I see ST elevations in V1, V2, V3, and that's it. A little in the L, but not too much. So what area am I looking at? What side of the heart is having MI? I'm seeing V1, V2. It has to be two per area. For MI qualifications, it has to be two per area. Two per area. So S-A-L-I. What am I looking at? V1 and V2 is what? Septal, all right? V3 is also elevated, but V4 is normal. You see that? It's normal. This is elevated right here. I'm sorry. My goodness. My, my, my apple pencil right there, right there, right there. All right, so the rule is it has to be two per area, two per area to qualify. So since V3 is elevated and V4 is normal, it is not considered 
anterior MI. So what type of MI is this? What type of MI is this? Where is the MI coming from? The septum. Now it guides the cardiologist to look at the septum, to the bloodstream there, to the blood vessel that is called LADA, left anterior descending artery, to find where the clot is coming from because MI is usually caused by clots. All right, next. Oops, 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 oops. oops. All right, I'm going to tell you guys where I see this ST elevation, okay? I see ST elevations in lead two, lead three, lead F. What am I looking at? What area is having MI? Anyone? Anyone? I'm waiting for answers. I'm waiting for answers. Come on now. Using your Sally, what area am I looking at? Are we looking at the uh, inferior? Yes or no? All right, that's it. That's why you do 12 lead EKG. That's basically to locate where the rhythm is coming from. All right, or the abnormality is coming from. Is it ventricles? Is it atria? Now, which atria? Is it the right side, the left side? Is it the ventricles? Is it the right side, the left side, the lateral, the inferior, the septum, the anterior? So that's why we do 12 lead EKG, okay? Now let's now move on to the dysrhythmias. All right, I'm going to give you some key keys to remember first, all right? When looking for dysrhythmias, we look for five things. We're only going to look for five things, right? We're only going to look for five things. It's the P wave, the QRS, the PR interval, the rate, and the rhythm. P wave, QRS, PR, rate, and rhythm. And we're going to study them one by one as we go through the different EKG findings, okay? Now that we know about EKG, now that we know about the time, now that we know the locations, now that we know what PQRST means, let's now go to PQR, SPR, rate, rhythm, five EKG parameters for dysrhythmia. I'm going to go one by one first to give you an overview or review again. P wave should be positive deflection, which means it should look like this. If it looks like this, abnormal. That's called flat P wave or absent P wave. If it looks like this, abnormal. That's called depressed P wave, very rare. If it looks like this, that's abnormal. That's called fibrillatory P waves. Fibrillation basically is chaotic, no pattern. No pattern, chaotic. That's fibrillation. Fibrillation, chaotic, no pattern. That's called fibrillatory wave. So those are your normal findings. How about QRS? We measure QRS by time. How many boxes should the QRS be? So you look here. This is normal P wave. That's normal. Check, right? Three boxes. Remember how many boxes for QRS? I mentioned this not more than 15 minutes ago. How many boxes? Less than three. Remember, QRS looks like the heart. Less than three, right? Less than three boxes, right? Do you guys agree to me? Yes? Yes. So let's look at your picture. Your Q is here. That's your box. That's your box. That's like two boxes. Is that normal? Is that normal QRS? Is that normal QRS in the picture? Hello? Hello? Everybody who will succeed and pass the LPLEX, is this a normal QRS? Yes, because it's only two boxes. It's less than three boxes. All right? PR interval. How many boxes for PR interval? How many boxes for PR interval, guys? How many boxes? Three to five boxes. Three to five boxes, right? Three to five boxes, right? Yes? Yes? Momo, it's three to five boxes. Very good. So let's count the one on the screen. That's one, two, three, four, five. That's five. Is it normal PR interval? Is it normal PR interval, the one on the screen? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Right? And the rate. What's the normal rate, guys? What's the normal rate? Heart rate. My goodness. This is a basic... Uh, Basic nursing school question. If you don't know this, I'm going to send you back to nursing school. 60 to 100 per minute. And rhythm checks for regularity. The way to check for regularity, you count the boxes in between. For example, this is P, Q, R, S, T, right? P, Q, R, S, T, right? P, 
PQRST. If you want to check the atrial, what are we looking for? P or QRS? Atrial, 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 atrial first, P. So to determine atrial rhythm, you check the distance between P and another P. I'm sorry, P and another P and P and another P. Say, for example, guys, this is seven big boxes in between, seven big boxes in between. Is that called regular? Yes or no? Yes or no? If the boxes in between P waves are the same, all right, each time, that's called regular rhythm, regular atrial rhythm. You got it? What if this is seven boxes and this one is six and the other one is eight? And the other one is seven boxes in between P's. We're only talking about P's because you're only checking atrial. P to P is atrial. P to P is atrial rhythm. You're talking about rhythm, regularity or irregular. That's irregular. Seven, six, eight, seven. It should be same number, same amount of boxes. Now, to check for ventricular rhythm, what are you going to check? You check R. R to R. So guys, look at this R right here, right? R to another R. R to another R. You count the boxes in between. Say, for example, this has six boxes and this has six boxes. Is that regular? Yes or no? Regular? Yes or no? Yes. What if it's different numbers? R to R. This is six boxes. This is nine boxes. This is five boxes. This is six boxes. Irregular. Remember that rate and rhythm are different. You can have Rhythm that are regular but abnormal heart rate, like SVT, regularly fast. You can have irregular but normal heart rate, like AFib can have AT heart rate, but the rhythm is irregular. You got it? Rate and rhythm are regular. Rate is rate. You count the number of heartbeats per minute. Rhythm talks about regularity between P to P and R to R. You got it? You got it? Okay, so that's P wave, QRS. PR, rate, and rhythm, all right? Another tip before we go to the dysrhythmias. Another tip before we go to the dysrhythmias, okay? Another tip. Four more tips to remember, all right? This is very, very quick. This is just applying what we've learned earlier. Guys, listen. If PQRS, PR, rhythm are normal, but only, only the rate is abnormal, only remember your five parameters, P, Q, R, S, P, R, rate, and rhythm, right? If everything is normal, but the rate is abnormal, you call it sinus abnormality. You got it? That's easy. Again, what is the only thing abnormal in a sinus irregularity or sinus dysrhythm, dysrhythmia? All right, again. What is the irregular, I'm sorry, what is abnormal in a sinus, it's, 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 it's right there on the screen. In a sinus abnormality, what is abnormal? P, QRS, PR, rhythm, or rate? Only, and again, only, and again, only the rate. You got it? Is it clear? If everything else is normal, and only the rate is abnormal, that's a sinus problem. But if there's anything else that's abnormal, then that's not sinus. Sinus is only rate problem because remember, sinus controls the rate and the rhythm, right? So if only the rate is the abnormality, then that's sinus. Now, what if the P wave is abnormal, but the QRS is present? It doesn't mean it's normal. It could be normal. It could be abnormal. For as long as the QRS is present, the ventricles are pumping, yes or no? If the QRS is present, the ventricle is pumping. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So that means if P wave is abnormal, but you still see QRS, then ventricles are fine. The problem is atria. You got it? That's why earlier we said P wave is atria. P wave is atria. P wave problem, atrial problem. You got it? Is that easy to remember? Is that easy to understand? Remember these pearls. Because we're going to apply this later. Again, for atrial problems, which part of your 5 EKG parameter is the problem? It's what wave? What wave? What wave will have abnormality 
if we're looking for atrial dysrhythmias. Anyone? 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 It's the B way. You got it? B way. Very good. Okay, QRS, QRS. If QRS are abnormal, you see it, it's wide, it's flat, it's wavy. Guys, think about ventricular right away. If QRS is abnormal and sometimes you don't see P at all, if you don't see P, atria is no longer functioning. QRS is abnormal, no P, that's a ventricular problem. P problem, atrial problem. No P, QRS is problematic, ventricular problem. Again, if the P wave is a problem, atria or ventricle, P wave, P wave, atria or ventricle, P wave, P wave. We keep saying P wave abnormality, atria. No P wave has QRS but abnormal QRS. No P wave, abnormal QRS, atria or ventricular. No P wave, abnormal QRS, atria or ventricular. Atrial ventricular, ventricular, all right? If the PR, now the last tip, if the PR is prolonged, what is the normal PR interval again? Give me in terms of numbers of boxes. It's 0.12 to 0.20 seconds or 120 to 200 milliseconds. But what is it? Three to five boxes. If more than five boxes, consider AV blocks. That's it. Only four things to remember. Rate is the problem. Sinus. These are the prefixes. Because remember, sinus, tachycardia, sinus, bradycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation. AV block first degree, AV block second degree. You got it? We're talking about the prefixes. Again, rate problem. Sinus, P wave problem, but QRS is there. Atrial, QRS problem, and there's no P that we can detect. Ventricular, a, a PR interval is the problem, and it's too long. AV block, you got it? You got it, nurses? Some people are still answering the three to five boxes. <laughs> oh my God. All righty. Okay. All right, so now I know who, who is using a uh, fiber optic um, connection, okay? All righty, now let's go to your first EKG, all right? Remember your five parameters. Let's look at your P wave here. Do you see P waves, yes or no? Answer quickly. Do you see P waves? Do you see P waves? Do they look normal to you? Do they look normal to you? Yes, P wave looks normal. Agree? Agree, look at the P wave on the screen. Maximize your screen if you have to. Probably let's do this. How about we increase the screen bigger, 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 bigger. Uh, how about that? Is that better? For those watching the live stream, because I think earlier was a little smaller. P wave is normal, right? What's the next parameter? QRS. Are the QRS normal? Are they within three to five box? I'm sorry, less than three boxes. QRS looks like a heart. Less than three. Do they look like they have less than three boxes? Yes. They look like they look like two boxes, right? So for me, that looks normal to me. You're welcome, John. John said it looks much better. All right. Are we still learning? Because if not, we're going to cut the, the stream. If I'm not effective anymore, I'm just going to quit and walk out. I'm just kidding. That's a little immature. Even if you feel like you don't like me, it's okay. It's not me. It's the EKG. All right? I'm pretty sure you're going to like me. It's just that I'm teaching EKG. <laughs> Guys, next. What's the next parameter? Fill me in. What's the next one that we're going to check? PR interval, right? PR interval. I'm, I'm dissecting it very slowly. I know the fast learners are getting upset with me because why are you teaching me like I'm a toddler? But it's because we have different learning capabilities. Some people are slow learners. So that's why I'm trying to dissect it as slow as I can. To be honest with you guys, I can teach EKG for one hour. But that's for advanced nurses. If I'm teaching ER nurses that are already on the, on the field, sure. All right? But I hope you're appreciating it. You can review the recordings and you can 
increase my talk speed fast forward to this part that you want but that's totally fine pr interval guys pr interval how many boxes again three to five boxes right look at the screen look at your pr intervals right there i think i'm seeing let's just use this as an example i think that looks like um four max boxes four and a half is that normal is that normal four and a half and all of them are normal yes okay and what's the next parameter the rate can anyone count the rate for me this is a six second strip as you see every line is three second every line three second can anyone count the rate how many hours did you see how many hours come on how many hours how many hours r r wave r wave seven one two three four five six seven times ten what's the rate 70 agree agree yes okay is that normal is that normal the ventricles are 70 somebody said how about the atrial we'll count the p for atrial one two three four five six seven as well don't count this because it's not a full ekg so seven atrial seven ventricular for me that's very good rate right that's 70 as well i counted the piece i counted the qrs that's good right for me that's good that's normal right how about the rhythm is the rhythm normal you know in schools they teach you to use a um, ruler or a protractor but honestly you can just visually check it you know what i use my fingers all right i don't move it just don't use it if you have tremors because you're like like what i do i put my finger on the screen check how far how far how far are, are they falling on the same finger you know what i mean r to r to r to r p to p to p to p the screen looks regular to me use your finger right now go use your finger put it on the screen put it on the screen does it look regular to you Yes or no? That's how quickly you can do it during your EKG in the NCLEX because there's case studies now in next-gen NCLEX. Use your finger. There's no rule about touching your screen. If they say, what you're doing, I'm measuring my EKG. Don't bother me, right? If the proctor tells you what you're doing. But in the NCLEX, use your fingers right away. Put it on the first P2P or QRS and then move, 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 move. This one looks regular to me. I don't even have to use my fingers. I can totally see it and it's regular to me, right? So regular, right? In Espanol, regular. In Filipino, it's also regular, right? <laughs> Filipino borrowed words from Spanish people. Okay, so what what is the reading? Uh-oh, what's the reading? What's the reading? This is your none other than what do you call this don't say sinus rhythm all right because sinus rhythm is also bradycardia or sinus tack or sinus um i'm not even going to talk about sinus um pause sinus uh uh what's this um arrest i'm not even going to talk about that today normal sinus rhythm you always say nsr because sinus rhythm can be many things you got it this understood nurses. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's look at the next one. Ta-da! Okay. P wave. Looks normal to me, right? It's big or oh, little humps, all right? QRS looks two boxes to me, normal. PR looks like five boxes to me, normal. Rate, count the rate. Oops, count the rate. Count the rate count the rate because sometimes i speak too fast and people don't understand count the rate count the rate what is it uh-huh wait 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 okay all right, so it's kind of slow. It's four, right? 40. For me, it's 40, correct? Okay, good. Good observation. How about the rhythm? Does it look regular to you? Regular. Guys, if everything is correct or normal, except the rate, what is our prefix? What is the origin of the problem? Sinus. Very good. And because it's slow, 
what do you call slow heart rate in medical term? What do you call the slow heart rate in medical term? Brady, is this called sinus bradycardia? Yes or no? Yes or no? So if the heart rate is slow, what do you want to do? What medical interventions do you want to give? Do you want to increase the heart rate with medications like atrophine and sympathetic medications like epinephrine? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? That's it. We know the problem. We know how to treat it. Very good. All right. Learning, learning well. It becomes easier now because we know the basics. It's hard to jump to EKG abnormalities. You don't even know the normal and physiology of EKGs. And I'm talking about lead two only. If you're only going to focus on one of the 12 leads, focus on lead two. Why? Because lead two follows the conduction system. It's in the same angle. To cut it short, don't overanalyze. Focus on lead two. Are we clear? The lead two will get you the best image. This is lead two right here. Everything that I'm showing you today is lead two. All right? Okay, lead two. Don't focus on anything else. We only do that if the cardiologist wants and if we try to look for STEMI. But if you're just doing basic EKG reading and determining if it's sinus or atrial or ventricular, guys, just focus on lead two. Okay? So this is lead two. Let's look at the problem now. Do we have P waves? Does it look normal? It looks normal to me. All right. The QRS looks like, um, put your fingers in, two boxes. Two boxes is normal to me, right? PR interval. Do I still see PR? You start at the P, you start at the QRS. Yes. Um, it looks like four boxes to me. Do they look normal to you? It looks normal to me. All right. What about the rate? Did anyone count the rate? Cebolia, 110. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have to count it. I don't trust you guys. I'm just kidding. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Kind of like when I go to the ER and take a report from a nurse. I love my coworkers, but I don't trust their reports. <laughs> Even if somebody tells me everything's fine, this patient's going to get discharged. I don't trust that. I've been burned so many times in the ER when the night shift nurse and I come in as day shift, and they say, this patient's going to get discharged, right? <laughs> That's part of being a nurse. You always recheck. You always assess you yourself. So it's not that I don't trust you. I just don't trust you. <laughs> I have a rule in ER. Like, even if you gave me your assessments, I will still assess. They will tell me, oh, it's okay. The wound is fine. I don't care. I'm going to check it. You know what I mean? If they tell me, oh, this is the medication. I pulled it out from the vial already uh, uh even if you're my best friend the medication you pulled is the medication you're gonna push unless i saw you pulling it in front of me especially during code situation if i see you pulling it out in front of me then i'll give it but if you pulled it behind me and i didn't see where which vial it came from i'm not gonna give it you know what i mean even if you're my best friend but anyway that's just being an er nurse for me you you got it intuition right because uh, that can cause cause mistakes. So anyway, I don't trust you guys, so I count it myself. It looks like 120 for me. Agree? Agree? Everybody has diagnosis already. Regular rhythm for me. You can just check R to R, P to P, R to R. Everything looks normal to me. Very good. This is called sinus tachycardia. Very good. So what's your goal? Yes, always verify. Even if the other nurses told you that this is what's happening. You always want to verify that yourself because at the end of the day, your patient, your problem. You can trust. That's correct, but verify. That's true. That's being part of a nurse. That's how you are trained. It's not like, okay, you trust. You don't trust me? No, I trust you, but I need to know it myself. All right. That's being a nurse, all right? So, um, all right. So what's your goal? If the heart rate is fast, do we want to slow it down? Do we want to slow it down? Yes, we can slow it down. With sinus tachycardia, don't treat it right away with medicines. It can be many causes. It might be because the patient walked for 30 minutes. It might be because the patient was in the hot weather outside and sweating. It might be because the patient's dehydrated, has fever, drank coffee, had energy drink. Treat the cause first. Don't give medicines right away, all right? Sometimes it's dehydration. In the ER, we just give them a bag of fluids and boom, everything looks good, right? That's not usually pathologic. Sinus tachycardia usually is just compensatory mechanism, right? But that's it. And there are many causes. Like, uh, oops, 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 my screen froze again. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one, guys. That's sinus tachycardia. Okay, sinus tachycardia. 
All righty, next. All right, let's now go to this. Ta-da, uh-oh. Do we see a normal P wave, yes or no? I, I, I overclicked. Do we see a normal P wave? Do I see a normal P wave? Is that, that, does that look like a normal P wave, guys? That looks like a normal P wave to you. No. Does that look like a sawtooth pattern, like saw? You know, the saw that we used to chop wood, yes or no? Yes. That's not a normal P wave. That looks like a sawtooth pattern to me, right? How about your QRS? So again, in Filipino, it's lagare, somebody said. What, what's the Spanish word for a saw? Anyway, going back, going back, all right? How about the QRS? Does the QRS look normal to you guys? I think it looks normal to me. It looks like less than three boxes to me, right? Sometimes it could be widened in this situation. Sometimes it's normal. But what did I tell you guys? If the P wave is abnormal, but the QRS is there, whether it's normal or abnormal, what is our origin? Atrial or ventricular? Atrial or ventricular? Atrial or ventricular? This is an atrial problem. Everybody agrees based on our what we talked about earlier? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So this is an atrial problem. Let's look at the PR. What's our PR interval? What's our PR interval? What's our PR interval? What's our PR interval? No? Yes? Anyone? More than five boxes. How about the others? What's our PR interval? Guys, I'm going to give you a quick tip. All right? Be ready for another pearl. The quick tip is if you don't see a normal P, there's no PR. If there's no P, there's no PR because there's no starting point. Remember, the PR interval starts with a P. You got it? So in this case, I do not see a normal P. Do I have a PR? Yes or no? Everybody. 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 No? No. That's it. Don't sweat it out. Don't make yourself too tired with identifying. Is this... Is this, is this PR? Is this PR? There's no PR. There's no P. There's no PR. You got it? How about the rate? Can anyone compute the ventricular rate for me? Count. Go. What's your ventricular rate? Anyone? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? Ventricular rate for me is eight times 10, 80. Agree? You guys agree? Please verify with me. Don't trust me because we're nurses. We don't trust each other, but we're still best friends. Right? Right? Okay, how about the atrial rate for every abnormal P that you see is atrial beats. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What's the atrial rate? What's the atrial rate, guys? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. My screen is acting up. I'm sorry, guys. What's the atrial rate, guys? 140. Agree? You guys agree? I counted all the P's. I mean, it's still P. It's just abnormal, right? So what do you guys think? Is the atria beating faster than the ventricles? Yes? Yes. Is this considered an atrial tachycardia? Yes or no? Is this considered an atrial tachycardia? Yes, you are correct. This is considered an atrial tachycardia, but it has a very specific name because of its pattern. Now, one more question before I gave you the diagnosis, because some people already know it and they're telling me already. Um, so the rate can be 250 to 400, right? Look at the rhythm. Look at the rhythm. Is it regular or irregular? I'm telling you before, even if the rate is abnormal, it doesn't mean it's irregular, right? Look at the rhythm. Use your fingers. Do the QRS look regular to you? And the even that abnormal saw, sawtooth pattern, you put your finger in and they fall in the right places all the time, right? If you see a regular fast atrial beats with sawtooth pattern, it is none other than atrial flutter. You cannot mistake this because it is very, very distinct. 
you see the sawtooth pattern that's regular and the QRS is there, that's atrial flutter. You got it? The other name is atrial tachycardia. You got it? That's it. It's an atrial tachycardia, but atrial flutter. It, it, it means the SA node is having excess beats, but why is the ventricle beating normally? Why is, is the atria 140 and the ventricles 80? You hear about AV node? Yes or no? Did you remember about AV node protecting the ventricle? Yes or no? You remember about the AV node protecting the ventricle? Yes. That's your AV node working brilliantly, working perfectly because now it's protecting the ventricles. Agree? Guys, basically, I'm just putting in everything that we've learned in the first two hours. And now it makes it easier to read because um, we already talked about it earlier. What what is why is the R? What what what's uh, what's the question of, of Bon Julie? Reframe your question. Oh, the rate. Okay, listen. I said earlier the rate can go as high as two forty, two fifty to four hundred, as high as. All right. In this certain scenario, it's only one forty, but it can go up to two fifties to four hundreds. All right. And honestly, you're not going to be able to count that. The EKG machine will be will be able to count that. And in, in your EKG, you're you're not going to see anything other than um, abnormal waves. The EKG machine will be able to count that. Will be able to count the rhythm or the rate. I'm sorry, but it can go as high as. Um, okay, Abonjali is confused. The rate that we're talking about here. Let me clarify. Is atrial. You got it. Because we're talking about atrial flutter. You got it? The ventricles can, I'm sorry, like I said, can be normal. Because the AV node is protecting the ventricles. You got it? Now, it can spill over and go to the ventricle. So when it goes to the ventricle and the ventricle is also fast, you see that in the QRS, that's called VTAC already or SVTs. All right? You got it, nurses? So the goal is to decrease the heart rate. You can give antidysrhythmics, control the heart rate with meds like calcium blockers, beta blockers. You can also give lidocaine, all right, during ACLS management. All right, very good. No more questions? All right, how about this? Do you see a P wave? Ta da Do you see a P wave? Mm, I don't think I see a P wave. I think I see fibrillatory chaotic wave. Do you see QRSs? Do we have QRSs? Anyone? Live stream people. I don't see you answering. Do you see QRSs? And then after this, we're going to have a quiz. All right? We're going to have a quiz. We're almost done. All right? We're going to have a quiz. QRSs. Yes. It's... It can be normal. It can be widened, but it's there. So if the P wave is abnormal... But the QRS is there. Is it atrial or ventricle? Atrial or ventricle? This is atrial problem. Very good. That's not a ventricular problem because QRS is still there. Do we have a PR? PR, PR, come on. PR interval, come on. PR interval. My Zoom room um, is on fire. They answer very quickly. A lot of these people have already attended my class in the past. No, there's no PR because if there's no P, there's no PR. The rate, well, the atrial rate can be high. The ventricular rate can also be normal or high, right? From normal to high. You see, we separated it. All right, how about the rhythm? You tell me, guys, the rhythm. I can't even detect the rhythm for atria. Even the ventricles are irregular. So that's the difference between A flutter and A fib. Sometimes A flutters are too fine. Like I told you, if it's too fast, it's too fine. It looks like A fib. But the key technique there is if it's regular and fast atrial beats, that's A flutter. If it's irregular, that's A fib. All right? You got it? All right? And guys, be careful with A fib. NCLEX question, all right? A fib is notorious with creating clots that can lead to stroke, all right? A fib can create clots, can lead to stroke. Because in reality, what happens is, look at me, look at me. This is your normal heart rhythm. Atrial, ventricle, beat, 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 
beep, right? Beep, 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 right? In atrial fibrillation, the ventricles are beating, but your atria are like this, right? It's quivering. It's quivering. It's not pumping. It's just quivering like that. Is that normal? No. It's going to create clots in the atria while your ventricles are beating, okay? You got it? So again, if the atrial beats are abnormal, P wave, and it's regular rhythm, that's atrial flutter. If the atrial beats are abnormal, P wave abnormal, and the QRS are irregular, that's atrial fibrillation. That's it. That's the only difference between the two. Atrial flutter, regular. Atrial fibrillation, irregular. Okay? Now, we have two forms. We have AFib with NVR or normal ventricular rate. And the one we don't like is AFib with RVR. What is RVR? Rapid ventricular rate. All right? Rapid ventricular rate. RVR. All right? So AFib RVR is where your atria is already beating too fast and your ventricles is also beating too fast. We don't like that. All right? We have to treat that with medicine because remember earlier I said if the heart rate is too slow or too fast, what happens to the cardiac output? Will the cardiac output go down? Yes or no? Will the BP go down and the patient becomes hypotensive? Yes or no? Can the patient have syncope? Yes or no? Yes. So we don't like AFib, especially if it's AFib RVR. All right? For many reasons. Why? It will not deliver adequate cardiac output. So you give them digoxin, antidysrhythmics like beta blockers, cardizem, all right? Which is their delta is it? Plus, it also creates clots. Clots can lead to what? And next question, what type of irregularity, electrocardiogram irregularity can lead to stroke? AFib, right? Because of clots, all right? You got it? So do they need to take anticoagulants? Somebody mentioned in the live stream, that's why they take Eliquis. That is correct. They do warfarin, they do aspirin, they do clopidogrel, or the DOAX. I teach pharmacology as well, right? My students, did I teach you guys pharmacology? Did I mention about this? Yes or no? For aphids, we use anticoagulants like Eliquis, right? Uh, Apixaban and Rivaroxaban, Xerelto, right? I'm also a pharmacology lecturer. And I love pharmacology. And I prescribe medicines here in the States. That's why I have to know that, right? All right, next. All right, so probably in the future, are you guys going to join me again for free class? Probably I'll do pharmacology in the future. I did it before. If you go to my Facebook, who follows me here in social media? I know my students do. Some of them don't like me, so they don't follow me. <laughs> who follow me in social media, all right? If you go to my Dr. Nurse Paul Facebook page or Aspire RN page, I have pharmacology lecture there about two years ago. I'm going to do it again, all right? All right? But please share your friends about Aspire RN and what we do here in um, Dr. Nurse Paul, okay? Okay, let's go back. What is this? ICP waves or no? Momo's like, adopt me. <laughs> I'm not up for adoption. <laughs> no P waves. Very good, nurses. No P waves. All right, no P waves. How about, um, why is it not clicking? I'm sorry, I keep clicking it, but it's not showing. All right, how about QRS? Do you see a lot of QRSs? Did anyone count it? Do they look normal QRSs to you? It looks like less than three boxes to me, so I'll say it's normal. Sometimes it's widened. It's very rare. It's it's actually not widened, guys. It should be narrowed. My my EKG slide has not been updated for several years. I'm so busy. I should update it. It should be narrowed. PR interval. Do you see PR? If you don't have a P, you don't have a PR. Agree? You don't have a P, you don't have a PR, right? Guys, the rate. Did anyone count it? I'm not going to count it. All I know when I look at this is it's too fast, too fast, too fast, too furious, right? <laughs> right? The rhythm, is it regular? Anyone, please? Regular, 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 yes or no? Nobody's answering me. Probably fell asleep or quit. I don't know. You guys don't like it? <laughs> what is this called? 
supraventricular tachycardia. Most likely, the origin of the dysrhythmia is somewhere around AV node. Sometimes patients have extra nerve in there, right? There are, there are three different branches there in AV node. Sometimes they get extra branch. The extra branch create their own impulse. Remember, AV node can create its own impulse. Yes or no, secondary pacemaker. Sometimes they have extra node in there and they're having AFibs and supraventricular tachycardias there. So sometimes the doctors who's working with cardiologists here, electrophysiologists, they can come in there, cauterize that extra nerve. We call it ablation to prevent those AFibs and SVTs because sometimes they have extra nerve. The doctors cut those nerves. Otherwise, it's just going to keep happening, All right? Or we can also cardiovert them. Cardiovert or medical cardioversion like Cardizem, beta blocker, propranolol, metoprolol, carvedilol. We can use that as well. The goal is to reduce the heart rate, okay? We can also use adenosine. I teach this in pharmacology. You have to push it quickly because the half-life is 10 seconds and patients can go flatline. Now, going back to EKG, I'm just going to focus on EKG right now. What's the difference between sinus tachycardia, because people get confused with this all the time, and SVT? What's the difference between sinus tach and SVT? Am I teaching tomorrow, Ralph? I don't think so. What? <laughs> okay, maybe. All right. My student in Asparagine said, I'm teaching pharmacology to them tomorrow. All right. All right. What's the difference? Can anyone tell me? Observe. Observe. Very good, Evanard or uh, Jay. Can I mention your name live? The only difference is in SVTs, there's no P, right? In sinus tachycardia, because they can also go up to 200, there is a P wave. You got it? There's P wave. Remember, in sinus, everything's normal except rate. That's sinus tachycardia. There's no P wave, or the P wave is same time as T, like that. P and T are already joined together. That's sinus, I'm sorry, that's supraventricular tachycardia. That's it. SVTs, no P wave. Sinus tachycardia has P wave because sometimes they look the same. Alrighty? Alrighty, next. Paroxysmal tachycardia, this came out in the NCLEX before, so just a quick tip. It has like very, very quick sinus tachycardia slash SVTs, and suddenly it goes back normal. Spontaneous, all right? If it recovers spontaneously, that's called paroxysmal tachycardia. That's why it's called paroxysmal. Paroxysm means um, spontaneously happening and it's resolving by itself. All right? All right? You got it? Don't worry about this too much. It's still an atrial tachycardia, but it's paroxysm. It's on and off, on and off. Abnormal, normal, without intervention. All right? Without intervention. All right? It's a syndrome. Some people get that a lot, especially young healthy individuals suddenly become palpit. I just had this patient yesterday, I sent her to cardiology because I suspect um, uh, bovary hoffman syndrome, Wolf parkinson syndrome versus PVCs versus SVT because she's, uh, she's having palpitations. Anyway, it's not moving, it's weird. Okay, here. All right, next, let's look at this. Guys, you look at this thing right here and right here. Is that a QRS? Yes or no? Did, didn't I tell you everything that's tall is a QRS, right? Um, Abigail, again, asked, what's the difference between AFib and SVT? A lot of difference. AFib has very bad P waves. Followed by QRS. SVTs don't have P. It's QRS, T, QRS, T, QRS, T. All right? A lot of difference. They're not even in the same spectrum. I'm only differentiating the ones that can get easily confused. AFib, A flutter, the difference is regularity. SVT, sinus stack, the difference is P wave. Right? But AFib and SVT don't look exactly the same. They're totally different. And, um, different spectrum so you're you're not going to confuse that because afib has qrs and abnormal p's svts don't have p it's super fast qrs t qrs t qrs t qrs t that's svt anyway go back to the video la uh, later abigail and compare those pictures okay pvcs this is oh my god i said the diagnosis this is called premature 
ventricular contraction, right? Because if you look at it, all right, the ventricles are contracting abnormally without being preceded by a P. Should it be a P followed by a Q or S and T? Yes or no? Atria beats first before the ventricles? Yes or no? That's a normal, right? Yes or no? Here, there's P, there's QRS, and then there's another QRS that's abnormal. All righty? So that's called PVC. The P is absent only in the abnormal QRS. The QRS, what do you, what do you see in the QRS? What does it look like? Does it look wide to you guys? Yes or no? Does it look like it's more than five boxes? Wide, bizarre, or weird looking? Yes. You see this in your EKG? Sometimes they have normal EKGs followed by a bump like that. Normal EKG and then a bump. That's automatically PVCs. Every time you see an abnormal QRS, it's flagged as PVC. All right? And PR interval is short. Sometimes there's no PR if the P wave is absent. Sometimes you can see small P's in there. I can still see the P in there, but it's not normal P, so we're not going to count that. You know what I mean? And rate depends on rhythm. In this case, how many QRS have you seen, guys? Have you seen, have, how many QRS have you seen, guys? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 10 is 80. Is it still normal heart rate? Yes or no? Is it still normal heart rate? Yes. That's why if you're just looking at the rate, you might not see it. Because a lot of PVCs have normal heart rate because the heart self-corrects, which means if the heart detects it, the heart corrects it, right? Right? So don't focus only on the rate. Check your EKGs, all right? Sometimes we do one full minute or better yet, put the patient on telemetry. Telemetry will capture that. And you know the telemetry machines, it will tell you how many PVCs per minute, right? If it's more than six, you got to intervene because it can convert into VTAC. It's very irregular. You see the T waves. We have one patient before. I was seeing PVCs and the doctor doesn't want to do something. I said, doctor, let me tell you something, all right? This patient has a history of cabbage. He's having PVCs eight per minute. We got to give him something. I said, no, we'll wait for cardiologists. We're going to admit this patient. I was like, I'm just telling you, I'm putting a note about it that you don't want to do something about it. Well, what do you know, guys? 30 minutes later, can you predict what happened to the patient? Patient went into full-blown VTAC, passed out, and we started having, having, having to do the code. It's cardiac arrest, right? So, you know, the doctor went back to me after and said, you know what? I should have listened. You're right. I was like, I told you, like, uh, I mean, if the patient already has cardiac history and has PVCs, don't undermine that. If they already have MI or stroke in the past, they already have stent or cabbage in the past, they already have CHF, don't undermine even one PVC can be fatal because it can convert into VTAC, right? PVC is already telling you guys that the Purkinje fiber is creating extra beat without SA node telling them, all right? Remember, SA node tells the whole conduction system how to beat. But here, the ventricles are pumping by themselves without SA node telling them to beat. You got it? So if you're not careful, can it lead to ventricular tachycardia? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Be very careful with PVCs. Will you report it if how many PVCs per minute? Per minute? At least six. If it's more than six, that's dangerous already. All right? If it's less than six, negligible, just note it. All right? And I mean, your telemetry will capture it. All right? And these patients should be. What does, what is PIC? Oh, PVC, abongyly, I sent, I said it earlier, is premature ventricular contraction. I said it earlier, premature ventricular contraction, okay? Premature ventricular contraction. That's a common NCLEX question. What do you see here, guys? Do I have a P? Do I have a P? Do I have a P, anyone? Hello? Do I have a QRS? Do I have a QRS? A lot of QRS and they're wide, right? Do I have a PR? Do I have a PR? Where's my live stream people? They had a coma. Did you guys have a cardiac arrest there or what? 
They have a PR? No. Alrighty? No. All right. Do I have a, uh, can we know the rate? This is too fast for me. So it can be a 100, 200. It can be over 200. It can reach as high as 600. Right? How about the rhythm on the pink screen right here? Does it look regular to you? There's two different types. Does it look regular to you right here? Yes or no? This is VTAC, by the way. Obviously, it's none other than ventricular tachycardia because there's no P, it's only QRS, right? Um, events, this will be recorded, yes, but I will still have to figure out where to upload it, okay? But the students, my students, you have access to it, unlimited. It's going to be in the portal, and this will be within 24 hours. For the public, I'm not sure when we're going to be able to upload it because we still have to post-process it. All right, guys, you see that? Regular or irregular? It looks regular to me. If it's regular, we call it monomorphic. Monomorphic VT, which means the origin is the same. It's just one origin. It's just repeating. It's just the ventricles beating too fast. If you see it this way, does it look regular to you guys? Yes or no? Does it look regular to you? Yes or no? No, this is called polymorphic. Polymorphic VTAC. Polymorphic. VTAC, all right, polymorphic VTAC. Polymorphic VTAC, all right, polymorphic VTAC. You got it? You got it? Ventricular tachycardia, all right? And that's dangerous. Too fast VTACs can cause cardiac arrest. That's one of the cardiac arrests, right? Can they lose pulse? Because remember, too fast heart rate, decreased cardiac output. No cardiac output, no pulse, no BP, no blood pressure, right? Can they pass out? Can they lose consciousness? Yes. What's the priority intervention? You get a VTAC patient, no pulse. No pulse, no respirations, and conscious. You see the telemetry, you see VTACs, and it's reading 250, but you don't feel a pulse. Do you start CPR right away? Yes or no? Yes. And next question. That's a cold blue situation. Very good. Start CPR, and um, that's it. Call your code blue team. CPR for at least two minutes if you're by yourself. That's our training, right? If there's someone else inside the room, somebody calls the code blue and gets the AED or crash cart while you're doing CPR. If it's two men, if you're by yourself, CPR first for two minutes. And if you have the code blue button right there in the side of the room, all of the rooms here in the hospitals in the states have code blue buttons. You press the code blue button. All right. Next. There's another form of polymorphic VTAC we call tersades. I'm gonna show you guys a picture. So in tersades, it looks like this. It looks like a spindle, like a party streamer when you twist it. You know guys, the party streamer, right? The one that we put during party, like long streamers. If you twist it, it looks like that. It looks like this, right? That's called tersades. You see big, small, big, small, big, small, right? Big, small, big, small, big, small, right? That's called torsades. And torsades is usually caused by hypomagnesemia. I'm not saying that's the only cause. I'm saying it's mostly, commonly caused by hypomagnesemia. Um, Abundantly, the difference between SVT and VTAC is in SVT, you see a T wave. In VTAC, it's only QRSS. I mean, you can look at the picture right away. VTAC is one of the easiest TKG. You can never miss a VTAC. Have you guys seen a VTAC in real life situation? That's something that you will never, ever miss, ever. If there's one EKG that you will never miss, it's VTAC. The other one is a systole. Because <laughs> VTAC is like bump, 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 bump. Nothing else. All right? That's it. That's VTAC. Right? And it's more common than you think. If you're in the hospital, you're giving meds that can trigger the heart rate to increase, that can cause VTAC. Right? Hypomagnesemia. So you give mag sulfate in cases of torsades. Torsades, again, is a, is a, is a um, form of polymorphic VTAC. And what's the common cause again, people? What's the common cause? Uh, I'm almost done here. I'm wrapping up. 
I'm just gonna go through the blocks and then we're gonna pass through uh, the blocks and then we're gonna do a little quiz. Hypomagnesemia, what do you give? We're losing viewers already. People are quit. <laughs> they're tired. It's long, huh? This is EKJ for you. Hypomagnesemia, you give mag sulfate. Very good. All righty? Very good. Okay, next. What if you see this? Irregular, chaotic, boom. Oops. What is going on? It's just irregular, chaotic, boom, 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 boom. There's nothing. I don't see a P. I don't see a QRS. I don't see a PR. I can't even count the rate, but the machine can count it. EKG machine will count it. Telemetry will count it. You cannot. There's no pulse for this patient. And the rhythm is highly irregular, obviously. All right? What is that? What is that? You see this. You can't miss this also. But sometimes if your EKG millivolts is set to low, you'll see it as a flat line. What you do is increase the volts. You can put it 1.5 times, 2.5 times, 10 times, so it's bigger. So you can see the, the waves, all right? But in, to cut it short, in the NCLEX, you don't have to worry about the machine. It's just going to show you picture. You see this? It looks irregular. It looks chaotic. This is called ventricular fibrillation. Question, what's the difference between V-fib and AFib? In AFib, there's abnormal fibrillatory waves followed by QRS, right? Abnormal fibrillatory waves followed by QRS, right? In V-fib, is there QRS? In V-fib, is there QRS? No, it's just abnormal fibrillatory waves. You got it? Do we have a pulse? If the heart is beating 300, at least, that's the minimum. Do we have a pulse? Do we have a pulse? No. What do you do first? Defibrillator CPR. Defibrillator CPR. Defibrillate Noel. Incorrect. You CPR first because the defibrillator machine needs to be plugged, needs to be brought to the bedside, needs to be charged, needs to be applied properly. You're going to waste time. CPR first and then defib. When the defib is available, we defib. Are we clear? That's an NCLEX question. And that's also part of your ACLS. You check your ACLS, what's at the top when you have cardiac arrest, VFib, or VTAC. What's at the top? CPR, right? You got it? Again, you enter the room of a patient and in the screen, it's flashing VFib, VFib. You've confirmed no pulse, unconscious, not breathing. What do you do, CPR or defibrillate? Start with CPR, right? Because we need to circulate the blood right away. Very good. But I mean, if the defibrillator is already set up, then you can defib. Once the defib is available, you defib, all right? But you always start with CPR. That's your ACLS training. That's in-hospital training, all right? Next. All right, there's no pulse here. This is cardiac arrest. This is another form of cardiac arrest. Next one. All right, thank you, next. That's a song, right? You see this? That's not a signature line. Assistantly, check the patient first. The leads might have been disconnected <laughs> and the patient's actually breathing and sleeping. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. What do you do first? What do you do first? This is also a form of cardiac arrest, but non-shockable. I'll teach ACLS in, in cardio lecture for my students. CPR first, okay? We're gonna focus on EKG right now. Okay? All right, let's go further to your blocks. First degree block, okay? We're talking about AV block. The one thing that I want you guys to remember is uh, the PR interval. Let's, let's go through this very, very quickly. PR interval is prolonged, all right? Guys, what's the normal again? Prolonged. What's the normal PR interval? Three, two, five boxes, right? Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Three to five boxes. If it's PR prolonged, there should be more than five boxes, all right? And in first degree block, this is easy to remember. First degree block. It's consistently prolonged. When I say consistent, all right, 
the PR interval is similar to each boxes. Listen to me first. I'm going to show you in the EKG, all right? And the PR interval is, I mean, the, the rhythm is regular. For every P, there's a QRS. Let me remove this. For every P, there's a QRS, all right? For every P, there's a QRS. Look at this. There's a P wave. There's a QRS. Every P, there's a QRS, right? Every P, there's a QRS, right? Agree? Because AV blocks usually have P's that don't have QRS. Again, if there's P for every QRS, that's usually first degree block. And look at the picture. I'm going to show you what it looks like when I say consistent. You see that? How many interval? Six boxes. What's the normal interval again? PR interval? Again, if it's AV block, you only look at PR interval. PR interval only. PR interval. The rate, the rhythm, the rate should be slow, the rhythm should be regular, and there should be no problem to the QRS. P, QRS, rhythm are all normal. We're only going to talk about the rate and PR interval. The rate is obviously slow because it's prolonged. Here it's six boxes. Look, followed by another PR interval, six. Followed by another PR interval, six. Is that consistent? Consi I don't think that's a good number, right? Six, 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 six. Count all the PR intervals in this EKG. They're all six boxes, right? 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 Is that consistent? Is that regular? Does every P... Followed by QRS, is every P, my, my God, my English, I need to take my IELTS again. Is every P followed by QRS? <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. When I'm tired, my English, I'm running out of English. English is my second language, All right? Is every P, 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 my goodness, my Filipino tongue. Is every P, in Filipino, guys, we say P as fee, and F, we say ep, first degree vlog. <laughs> All right, yes, this is first degree block. Look at it closely. Look at it closely. Again, rhythm, regular. QRS, normal, right? P waves, normal. PR interval, consistently prolonged. Rhythm is slow, all right? Is every P followed, followed by QRS? Followed. <laughs> is every P followed by QRS? Yes. Let's compare this. Let's compare. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. I know there's going to be question. There's going to be question. But look, second degree type one, when Quebec. In when Quebec, now the PR interval is variable. When I say variable, it could be six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten. We're only talking about PR interval. Listen to me first, and I'm going to show you in the EKG. All right. And there's a drop QRS. What is a drop QRS? A P that is not followed by QRS. In the normal EKG, every P has QRS, right? After atria, ventricle, P, QRS, P, QRS. A drop QRS is P, blank, P, QRS. Reset is normal PR interval. So this is how it goes. Long, longer, drop Reset. We're talking about PR interval here. Long, longer, drop QRS, reset. Look at the picture so you can understand it better. Let's start here. That's normal PR. Let's start here. This is, hold on. This is eight boxes. PR interval, look. Followed by nine boxes. Followed by drop QRS. Followed by reset, five boxes, right? What's your normal PR interval again, nurses? What's your normal interval? What's your normal interval? Three to five. So you see, eight, nine, drop. There's no QRS. There should be a QRS there. And then reset. It goes back to five. And then followed by eight, nine, drop, five. Eight, nine, drop, five. Again, focus on PR interval. You don't see a P. You don't see a QRS. That's drop QRS. You see a normal QRS there, or I'm sorry, PR interval, it's called reset. So long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset, right? First degree is constant, 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 constant. 
Second degree type one, long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. What's the pattern again for first degree, second degree type one? Second degree type one? Second degree type one. Long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. Again, I'm only talking about PR interval. Do not look anywhere else. If the PR is abnormal, you suspect AV block. Again, let's compare. First degree, constant, constant, constant. Second degree type one, long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. You still with me? You still with me? Very good. Let's make it a little more interesting. Let's now go to second degree type two. Second degree type two is called no bits. Now the pattern is long, long, drop, reset. I'm sorry, no reset. Long, long, drop. Long, long, drop. Long, long, drop. Long, long, drop. Body were a team, make a big noise going on the street. <laughs> like, like we will rock you, right? Long, long, drop. Long, long, drop. You see this? Look at the picture. Long, seven boxes. Long, drop. <laughs> it started with drop. Long, long, drop. Long, long, drop. What's the difference between second degree type two and type one? In type two, it's same number of prolonged interval. There's just a drop. In type one, it's long, longer, longest, right? In type two, it's same number of PR intervals. In type one, there's a reset. In type two, after a drop, it goes back to the same number of boxes. You got it? You got it, nurses? Again, pattern for first degree, constant, constant, constantly prolonged, right? Pattern for type one, second degree type one, long, longer, drop, reset. Reset is normal PR interval. And then long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. How about type two mobits? Long, long, drop, long, long, drop, long, long, drop, long, long, drop, long, long, drop. But you still see the PR interval is prolonged. You got it? You got it, nurses? You got it? You got it? But that's it. There's no reason. All right, third degree. This is the last one. All right, for third degree, guys, there's no pattern. All right? There's no pattern at all. It's very chaotic. And this one is actually the easiest to figure out. You know, the, the most confusing is second degree because there's type one and type two. But third degree, guys, no pattern at all. No pattern. You see that? Let's start with a P wave there, then a drop, then a 10 box PR interval, then a P wave, then a drop, then a seven box interval, then a P wave again, then a P wave again, then an interval of 19 boxes. Is there a pattern? Is there a pattern? Yes or no? Is there a pattern? Anyone? There is no pattern. All right? Are there more P's than QRS in the screen? In your six second strip, are there more P than QRS? How many P's did you see? How many P wave? If you guys are still asking me what is P wave, my goodness, we've been talking about this for four hours. What is P wave? There are seven P waves. I'm, I'm not going to trust you. I'm going to count myself because I'm a nurse. One, two, three, four, five, six, four, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Who said seven? I've only seen six. My goodness, y'all. How many QRSs did you see? How many QRSs did you see? There's six. Okay. Somebody said three. Somebody said six. Somebody said seven. I'm going to count it for you guys. I don't know where you're all counting your piece. P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave, P wave. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, five. Oh, here. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's your piece. Piece, six. How about QRS? One, two, three. 
Are there more P's than QRS? Yes or no? That's it. That's your indicator that that's your third degree. It's actually so easy to see because as soon as I see a third degree, I know it's a third degree. You know why? Because I see more P. There's a lot of P without QRS. That's it. And it's super prolonged. The heart rate is super slow. You know, third degree uh, blocks usually have heart rates less than 40, 30, 20, 10. They pass out because they don't have blood volume going on. That's called sinus bradycardia arrest. So I'm sorry, not sinus bradycardia arrest. Bradycardic arrest. Cardiac arrest, but because of slow heart rate. You got it? Okay, let's review again your first, second, and third degree, okay? All right. What's the pattern for first degree again? First degree pattern. Constant, 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 right? Constant, 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 six, 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 seven, 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 eight, 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 nine, nine, nine. Is there a drop P? No. There's a reset? No. It's just regular. It looks like sinus bradycardia. The only difference between first degree AV block and sinus bradycardia is the PR interval. In sinus bradycardia, the PR is normal. In first degree block, the PR is long. You got it? That's it. Very good, nurses. Very good. Okay, you can review this video, okay? Second degree type 1, what's our pattern? Long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. Long, longer, drop, reset. It gets longer and longer and drop and then reset. It's like your relationship, right? Sometimes you don't communicate for three days and then it becomes three months and then suddenly you don't talk anymore and then you let go and then you have another partner or boyfriend or girlfriend, right? That's just like your relationship. You're like when came back, all right? This one is long, long drop, long, long drop, long, long drop, long, long drop. It's not like the other one has reset. This one doesn't reset. It's just keep going and going and going, right? Third degree. So long, long drop, long, long drop. All right, third degree, no pattern. More P's than QRS. It's all over the place, all right? All right, now get a piece of paper and we're gonna have a quiz. Go, get a piece of paper. Come on, come on now, let's do it. So we can wrap up. Write your answer on a piece of paper and then we're gonna check your answers later, okay? Can we do that? Everybody who's ready for a short quiz, say, yes, I can. Come on. So we can wrap up. It's been a long day. Thank you for joining. Everybody who's joining me, again, we have 50% off. Again, now it's no longer for retakers. It's for everybody who joined this show. Tell your friends. Message us in the screen right in front of you. All right? Um, oh, let me see. All right? Oops, okay. There's a QR code here, but message us on Facebook. My team will be waiting for your messages right there. All right, right there. Scan it, scan it. All right, and we're going to give 50% off for everyone, especially those who attended this show. All right, I just, just want to be able to help you. All right, Aspire RN for me is not a business. It's a mission. My mission is to help you guys pass. We have 98% pass rates for the NCLEX, all right? And uh, we've helped a lot of nurses already. A lot of them are already here in the US. And I want you guys to be part of the phenomenon. We're also, you know, friends with a lot of agencies, ethical recruitment. I don't make friends with non-ethical recruitment agencies because my advocacy is to protect you guys from unscrupulous practices, from people that are trying to make money, all right? to abuse our immigrant nurses. That's what Dr. Nurse Paul Advocacy is about. That's what I'm fighting for in Siena. That's why I'm making sure that this is not happening to you. So I only handpick agencies that I know will take care of nurses and I have direct contact to their CEO. So if nurses have issues, I can contact their CEO right away, CEO to CEO, all right? That's it. If the agencies don't want to give this protection to nurses where I can contact them if my nurse has a problem, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna endorse them to my nurses. No, -uh. mm -mm. 
All right. That's it. I fight for you guys. My advocacy is for you. So I don't really make money about this by art. For me, it's more of a mission. And my team knows that. My student knows that. We do so much more than what we get paid for. But I don't care about that. I make money somewhere else. My goal is to help nurses fulfill their American dream because I was once like you. I grew up poor. Watch my story in my uh, social media. I grew up very poor, guys. You know, we didn't have a house. I just bought my mom a house last year, paid for it cash from the American dream money that I saved during the COVID. But guys, do you know that during my nursing years when I was a BSN, I was studying under candlelight because we didn't have payment for electricity. We didn't have electricity for three years. I would go to school without food. I literally have a friend in first year college. Her name is Dazzy. Hello, Dazzy. All right. I haven't talked to her for a long time. But guys, she would give me food because I would not eat the whole session in class for six hours. Whenever it's break time, I just go somewhere and hide because I don't have money to eat. All right. But she would give me food. I told her my story. I didn't want to embarrass myself to everyone. So I didn't want to tell them the story. But we don't have electricity at home. I just walked to the school walking to the school, walking back, stay in the library till 9 p.m. so I can review, all right? It's a struggle. But I told myself one day, this will all be worth it, all right? All right? I grew up with so much hatred, bitterness, a very traumatic childhood. I was suicidal many times in my life. But now I dedicate my life to make sure that nurses reach their dream, all right? And that nothing can stop them. So NCLEX is just one of those things, okay? But that's that's my mission, okay? Anyway, you guys are ready for EKG? And for those who are in the States, please, let's meet, especially to my students who are already here in the U.S. I want to meet you. Let's interview you and put you in my social media about American Dream and Journey, family, and, you know, studying hard. I want to sh share inspirational stories in my in my social media. That way nurses know that even through the struggles, we can win. We can succeed. You guys agree with that? Right. Okay. Everyone ready with a piece of paper? That's that's the story of my doctor nurse Paul social media. It's not just there. I remember them telling me, why don't you dance so you can go viral? I'm not there to go viral to dance. I'm not a dancer, right? I'm there to inspire. I want my social media pages to make sure uh, that the message that we're sending is to inspire nurses. All right, different struggles, different backgrounds, different challenges, but everybody's winning and succeeding, all right? Same is true with my students. They know my story. I always tell them that, all right? That's why no struggle is too hard for a very determined person, okay? All right, ready? Write your answers first. Do not put in the chat box. We'll answer later. Okay, number one. This is timed. This is timed exam, so I'm going to mute myself first so you don't get distracted. It's going to flip by itself, so there's no going back. Kimberly, keep your answers to yourself first. We're going to check your answers later, okay? Number three. Number four.
We're almost done. Number 11. You're going to check the number of your correct answers and you're going to tell me later, okay? And thank you for everyone for sticking with me. To my students, thank you. It's been a long day, but you guys are used to this already. And to everyone who joined the free class, I think you're going to get a link once the show ends so you can watch it later. All right? And share it to your friends too. The goal is to help everyone. It's not only for NCLEX takers, it's also for those who are already practicing in the bedside. Number 12. Number 13. Fourteen, and I think we still have one more, it's 15 items. And number 15, last number. All right, let's now check your answers. Okay. Um, all right, let's check your answers, ready? I'm gonna give you the answers. Number one is atrial fibrillation, right? Atrial fibrillation, all right? Very well. All right. So that's atrial fibrillation, everybody who got this correctly. Number two. Oops. What, what happened? Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, number two. Hold on, guys. Okay. Number two, this is uh, sinus bradycardia because everything looks normal, right? Everything looks normal to me, except the rate. This is 40 per minute, sinus bradycardia, right? Number three. Number three is, uh, hold on guys, the screen is not, okay. Number three is, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is normal sinus rhythm to me, normal sinus rhythm. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hundred, ten, a uh, hundred. I'm sorry, hundred per minute. This is normal sinus rhythm. NSR, number three, normal sinus rhythm. Number three, normal sinus rhythm. Number four, anyone can answer this for me. Number four, anyone can answer this for me. Atrial flutter, very good. Atrial flutter, sawtooth. Remember, it looks like sawtooth pattern. Atrial flutter is regular. This is regular. Atrial fibrillation is irregular. So this is flutter because it looks like a sawtooth, like saw that you use for, um, for logs, right? This one, number five. Anyone can answer this for me? Number five. Anyone can answer this for me? Anyone? How about from the live stream? V-fib. Very good. Ventricular fibrillation. All right? Ventricular fibrillation. V fib, V fib, all right. Ventricular. I'm not, I'm sorry. Oh my god. So, but what am I reading? Supraventricular tachycardia. Who said V fib? I, I said that incorrectly. It's SVT. SVT. I'm sorry. Number five, not V fib, because I remember A fib. SVT. Supraventricular tachycardia. My mistake. Sorry, guys. SVT. All right. I think I'm tired. Number six. Number six, are we done with five? Yes. Number six is a first degree AV block. First degree AV block, right? You see the PR is prolonged. It's like seven or eight boxes, right? 
and it's constant. It's just constantly prolonged. First degree AV block. Number six, first degree AV block. Number seven. Number seven is, uh, um, mm -hmm. there's a reset. I see that. Long. Hold on. There's more P's than QRS, right? And there looks like is no pattern, right? Right? There's more. This is prolonged PR. You can see the prolonged PR. On the, there's a drop P or QRS on the first wave. And on the second wave, it's prolonged PR. You, it tells you that it's a block. It's a third degree block. Very good. For those who determined it, it's a third degree block. You see it? You see it? Does it make sense now? Yes. For those who didn't get it correctly, look at it again. Maybe you'll understand now. It's a third degree block. That is correct. Number eight. My goodness. My goodness. What is that? Fat, fatty. Fatty. I think you're two numbers behind. You're still in number six. We're already in number eight. Number eight is asystole. Asystole, asystole, asystole. Number nine, number nine, number nine, anyone? Number nine, anyone, anyone? They're still in a systole. The live stream is one number behind. What is this number nine? Now, Fatty is still in number seven. She will catch up very soon. <laughs> Number nine is normal sinus rhythm with artifacts. You see the normal sinus rhythm? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Guys, you see that? That's artifacts, guys. You literally can see the PQRST behind it. PQRST behind it. You see that? QRS, 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 QRS. I see it. QRS. Normal sinus rhythm with artifacts. The patient's moving. The patient's moving. That's not pyroxysma. You see those straight lines? That's called artifacts, guys. You see those straight lines? I'm going to clear it so you can see it properly. You see it? You can see the PQRST behind it. The rule is check completely or carefully. You see the waves behind it. It means the patient's moving or the leads are off. You got it? Artifact. That's not paroxysmal. They're still catching up. In the live stream, there are two numbers behind. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. Um, number 10, number 10, looks like a drop P at the beginning. The second wave is normal, long, longer drop, lo normal, long, longer drop. Second degree type 1, when Quebec. Number 10, second degree type 1, when Quebec. Second degree is incomplete, Noel, because we have two types. All right, second degree type 1, number 10. Number 11. About my live stream people, they're still in number one. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a there, there's a delay for sure. Number 11. Number 11, what is that? I'm going to count the QRSs for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Are you guys doing good? Or all you see now is an EKG strip. Number seven, right? So that's normal sinus rhythm. That's 70 per minute. Everything looks good to me. No prolonged PR. QRS looks good. Rhythm looks good. This is normal sinus rhythm to me. Number 12, my goodness. What is number 12? My goodness. Very good. Very good. Very good. Is this a VFib forever? NSD? <laughs> I think Rob was talking about the, the following one. It's not NSD, NSR. No, Ramia, this is um, uh, VFib for you, ventricular fibrillation. I think Ramya was answering the previous one. The previous one was NSR, normal sinus. Remember, blocks have prolonged PR, right? So number 12 is VFib. Number 13, this is easy. 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 VTAC. Everybody who said VTAC get half a point. I'm going to give you partial score, 0.5. Everybody who said monomorphic VTAC gets one full point. One full point for monomorphic VTAC, half a point for those who said VTAC only. Okay? We have partial scoring now because of NGN, partial score. So it should be monomorphic VTAC. Monomorphic VTAC. Half a point for those who said VTAC only because it's not complete. 
You have to be careful. Monomorphic VTAC is not polymorphic VTAC. What is this? Oh my God, what is this? This one is distinct. I even took time to explain this earlier, right? I said you reported to the doctor this more than six per minute. I gave you an example of my personal experience. I've experienced most of these in the ER, actually all of these, all right? Because these are common. And that's part, everything that I taught today is part of ACLS. And that's only what comes out in your NCLEX anyway, what is taught to you in the hospital. Any more than that, we refer to cardiologists. Number 14 is PVC premature ventricular contraction. PVC premature ventricular contraction. And number 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 120. 120 per minute. Everything looks good except the rate. And it's fast. What is this? What am I? Everything looks good except the rate. And it's fast. Is this sinus tachycardia? Yes or no? Is this sinus tachycardia? Yes or no? I'm sorry. Number 15, yes or no? Yes. That's it. Um... I think we're good. And uh, that's it. Um, we finished it. What's your score, everybody? Everybody, score. Come on, come on. Don't be scared. Don't be, don't be embarrassed about your score. This is the best time to learn. So whether you got it perfectly or score is low, that's totally fine. That's why you're here in this EKG class to learn. Did you guys learn a lot? 13, very good, students. 14, very good, Noel. I can retire now. You can take my spot. <laughs> I think I'll be a very self-actualized person. If somebody can continue with my mission, you know, I can retire. That's That for me is success. If, if um, I can train someone who can continue, you know, or do better than what I'm doing, that's my definition of success, all right? So that's it. Hopefully, someone of you will take the mantle to help the future generations of nurses and inspire them. We're not here to scare them. You know, before when you were in school, you have teachers that you don't like because they're terrorizing you. I don't believe in terrorizing students. I believe in inspiring students, right? Uh, I've been a scholar student myself when I was in college. I was a dean's lister. I don't like the way teachers terrorize students, right? So it was like, I was waiting for Torsad. It never came out. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations to everyone who got above 10. Very, very good scores. For those below 10, between 5 to 10, borderline score, that's still okay. If it's below 5, thankfully, this is recorded. You can watch it again. Thank you for joining, everyone. And again, for those who are um, joining us in the free class, we are offering 50% now for everyone. If you have friends and you finish NFLEX already, but you have friends who want to take the NFLEX, this is the best time. Let me talk to them. Let me train them. Let me inspire them and motivate them to pass. And for my students, thank you for being generous. You know, guys, we have to take my students as well because they share their time with you, all right? Because supposedly this is my time with them. But the Aspire students are also very generous because they let me share my time with you guys as well. All right. So thank you to Aspire RN students for being generous so we can help other nurses that don't have the funds to review. And I like teaching. I like talking to people. All right. So hopefully I'll see you guys in my future classes for my Aspires. You're going to see more of me. We're going to talk more about your preparation for the young All right. Email me if you have questions, mentorship. Your mentors are ready to assist you your student advisors are ready to assist you again let us know if you have exam dates for everyone thank you guys i appreciate your time everybody who are registered will receive a link i think this is the first time you've used the webinar function you will be able to watch it and uh, if not we're going to upload it in youtube very soon so please follow me all right at Dr. Nurse Paul. Tell your friends about me. We're going to do free classes. Again, I forgot to say, oh my God, I have a free class on Monday. It's going to be live stream on my page. Um, I don't have the poster, but I have a free class on Monday. It's free EKG class. Do we have it? Um, it's free. Uh, no, no, not EKG. Today's EKG. NGN, Next Generation Case Study. It's one hour only. I'm just going to show a case study to my students, you can join me. It's going to be 7 a.m. Central Time. It's hosted by AMN International. 
but I'm gonna live stream it on my page as well. So follow me on my page in Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube. I'm gonna live stream that as well. I'm gonna present to you guys next generation case study. All right, case study is going to be next Monday. On Monday, today is Saturday in the States. Monday, 7 a.m. Central Time. One hour only. It's not going to be a full class. This is a full class. I do four-hour classes. One hour only. We're going to go through six questions. Very interesting case. I prepared the slides already. Very, very good case. And that will. Uh, it's also the President's Day, of course. It's, it's a holiday. But we don't have holidays when we're trying to help people with their dreams. Thank you so much to my moderator, Jaxwell. And to Aspire RN moderator, Loris. Thank you, guys. Thank you to my team for helping us. This is the schedule on February 19. My Valentine's special for you guys. Late Valentine's gift, two free class. 19 engine, case study, 7 a.m. Central Time. Will be live stream in Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, guys. Bye now.